Let's watch our beautiful Z, our wonderful, thoughtful Z. It's kidology and I make videos about everything and anything to do with modern society. And that is precisely what we are talking about today because this is a very interesting video reaction that I think underpins a rather prevalent phenomena in modern societies today, especially as it pertains to social media. Now this video may be about lesbian bar drama, but I think it speaks to a rather bigger issue that I think is so, so, important and is just so, as I said, prevalent today. Now I'm going to be reacting to a reaction of the original video by a content creator who I think exemplifies this point that I'm going to be trying to make because it is something that has been getting on, I wouldn't say my nerves exactly, but it's something that really speaks to this issue right now, which is minorities not being taken seriously and increasingly not being taken seriously because of video reactions such as this and what they exemplify. And I think the thing which this reaction really shows is the difference, the stark difference between two groups of people and the sort of monopolization mm. over a conversation and over the entirety of people by this one group of people who are just, at least when it comes to social media, everywhere. Ooh. Mm. Lesbians. In our world of the oppression Olympics, there are in my mind two groups of people. The first being actual minorities and the second group being people who cosplay their minority status. This isn't to say that the cosplayers aren't minorities. It's just to say that they have essentially created either a brand or an aesthetic around their minority status, which they actually don't live by, mainly because not all minorities are equal insofar as being minorities. There are particular minorities Minorities who are more privileged than other minorities and no minority is exactly the same comes from the same background or the same circumstances has the same experiences etc what I see online is that people who cosplay their minority status get a lot more attention and are a lot more successful than actual minorities and I think this is for quite obvious reasons firstly their minority cosplaying is often very aestheticized it looks good and it gets mm. them brownie points from the group and from their subscribers and their viewers being a minority is seen as something hip or cool and trendy. You can create a whole style, an entire brand around being a minority. And for that reason, people essentially want to be you or they want to emulate you. Why I call it cosplaying is because these people aren't in fact living the realities of being a minority. And this leads me to hmm. the queer kiwi and the sort of content which I think really exemplifies this very point, this very difference between actual minorities and those who like to cosplay their minority status. And this particular video reaction exemplifies this point perfectly for me. In this video, the queer kiwi reacts to a recent TikTok drama revolving around a lesbian bar. And this is said video which went viral on TikTok and which has resulted in a plethora of responses from different mm -hmm, individuals. Mm -hmm. I was actually going to cover it, but then I didn't cover it. So now we're going to cover it anyways, because I had some thoughts all across the internet. Friday night, I went to my first lesbian bar. I was about to go home early, but then my friend who's a lesbian came over to the bar at the restaurant we were at and said, I'm gonna go to this bar, do you wanna come? And I was like, absolutely, why not? We got there and I was having so much fun. Everyone was so nice. The music was all like Renee rap and I was living my best life. Until one of our guy friends wanted to meet up with us and he comes into the bar for quite literally two minutes. Literally wanted to come and say hello and leave. Girl approaches him pretty soon after he walks in and goes, what are you doing here? To be honest, I was a little taken aback because as a straight woman in a gay bar and also a straight woman who goes to a, a male gay bar, I've never felt like that before or been approached like that. The girl goes on to say like, I've been coming to this bar for 10 years and blah, blah, blah. Basically like my friend didn't belong there. Now I get it. It's a gay bar for women, for women. But the amount of very obviously flamboyantly gay men that were in that bar that were not being approached and yelled at was wild. And I'm just curious uh, your thoughts on this because I was like, I looked at her and I was nice until I wasn't. But the way she spoke to us like as a group and I looked at her and I was like, he is with us, he's good. Like she was not having it. She did not want him in that bar at all and I get it, but like, there's no rules against that unless there are and I didn't see them but we left soon after because we had already been there for a while and he just literally came to say hello but I'm just curious like 
are males, are straight males not allowed to go to a lesbian bar? I am genuinely curious, like I said, this was my first time going to a legit lesbian bar. So please, it, like, enlighten me. I guess like he's probably never gonna go back there again because it really wasn't worth the drama. But I just feel it was a little dramatic. So this woman had a, I would say a rather negative experience at a lesbian bar, actually a queer bar. If you go onto the website of the Cubby Hole, it is actually very clear that this is a place that is open to all people. Cubby Hole aims to maintain a safe space for all. No bigotry, racism, transphobia, or discrimination of any kind will be tolerated. We rely on all of our patrons to uphold a... Did Z have to take out the isms from this? safe space for all. Staff members are available to assist if ever necessary. So by my interpretation, not allowing discrimination of any kind means not discriminating against a straight, white, cis gender man who comes into your bar and isn't causing anybody any harm, which this man wasn't by all accounts. Now what I found most interesting was their queer Kiwi's response to this. And this for me is why so much support for the LGBT LGBTQ plus community is really waning. And I think- No, it's waning because people love to hate, bro. They just love to hate, bro. It's not, it's waning because of optics, but not because of actual, like, why do people even feel this in the first place? As a, as a queer girl that used to go to lesbian bars and hate when straight women were there, I hated it. I hated when straight women would show up to the bar because it was exhausting enough trying to already approach a woman and then you find out she's straight and you're like, Jesus. Like lesbian spaces are very hard to come by, but also this isn't a lesbian space. This seems to be a gender inclusive space, so. I think it's waning for good reason when it comes to this kind of cosplaying of one's minority status. He's probably never gonna go back there again because it really wasn't worth the drama, but I just feel it was a little dramatic. The entitlement that like, we are we not gonna see the other girl's response, bro? If kid doesn't show, is kid gonna show the other person's response? Okay, if you say she will, she is going to. Okay, okay. Drips off of this video is astounding. Honestly, it's quite impressive the level of okay, entitlement that exists in this video. It's absolutely absurd to me that she doesn't understand like the problem here and is confused by the confrontation that happened. Um, and the upset that it caused. Now, this is one problem that I find with these minority cosplayers. I find it really an issue that when somebody asks a very honest question, a very vulnerable question in some cases, such as, for instance, about transgenderism or about identifying as non-binary, for instance, because these things are very complicated and very difficult, there is this assumption that you are somehow either being purposely stupid or that you are entitled for asking a question. Because this woman was actually just asking a question because in her experience and I would say in the experiences that I've had going to gay bars there really hasn't been this sort of rhetoric that straight people aren't allowed. Even if we take sexuality out of the conversation even if we removed that and we're just like this is a woman's space because you know she is a woman so she should be able to understand that at least right you don't invite men into that space because it is a sanctuary away from men. That is not a space for men to be, yeah? Um, and especially cishet men. Like she mentioned that there were some like flamboyant gay men that were there and like, why isn't that a problem? The reason that isn't so mm. much of a problem is one, if they were invited by like their sapphic friend, then they are allowed to be there just as you as a straight woman are allowed to be there. They aren't going to be going and like hitting on women and making women uncomfortable. They are there with their sapphic friend because they are both queer. They are in a queer space together and respecting that they are a guest in that queer space. Okay, this is a real issue that I see at the moment, which is interesting because this is sort of the exact same thing, which allegedly the queer community and allegedly minorities have been trying to fight against. And that is profiling people based on their appearance and how they look physically. Profiling and being judged on how you look and your appearance is literally the bane of existence for minorities. If this is something that we are meant to be trying to 
eradicate. Why is it okay for you to judge somebody on how they look? I, for instance, look like a very vanilla, straight individual. I'm not. And so am I not allowed into particular spaces because I don't look quote unquote queer? Can I be real with you? I, I do think spaces should be for certain people. Like certain vibes. I like going to queer spaces. Like I don't like straight clubs. I don't like the vibe. The straight club vibe is like very uncomfortable to me. But I'm not going to tell straight people to change the vibe. Like orientation seems to play on vibe because the bubbles reflect like the cultural impact of those vibes. The reason queer people want spaces is just so they can speak unmasked or be unmasked. The reason like black people want certain spaces is so they can be unmasked. And like that's even some of the reasons why like I mean everyone feels some sort of way about it. Look even like I know so many Catholic people who don't hang out with non-Catholics because they are not comfortable around them. Like because they don't feel like they can speak their like their truest heart right. And I'm not saying this should be in any way legalized. Like I don't think legally you should be able to do this. Just socially, I don't understand like why you would want to be in that space. But if you want to be in that space, you have to understand that like some people, that is their safe space, right? So again, like I don't think anyone should get kicked out. I don't think there should be a law. I don't think anything like that. I think if we respect our communities, we should consider if we're overstepping. And that's it. Like if you want to be considerate of people, just, just like human to human, not like the laws, like human to human. You know what I mean? It's like people work really hard to create like a vibe. You know what I mean? And so it's kind of like if you don't fuck with the vibe and you stand out in the vibe, it's kind of like why? But also I can understand how difficult it is for individuals to want to go to a space. Like I said in my 20s, it was really difficult to be in women's spaces. There weren't very many. And then on top of that, you're dancing with a girl and she goes, hey, I'm straight, by the way. It's like, why are you dancing with me? Like, I'm in this space to date. It's already hard enough. But I can understand that perspective as well. Like, I feel like I can understand all the perspectives. But like, we're now we're asking the question of whose perspective is more right. Well, it doesn't matter. It's categories. What category of person fits into this space? You know what I mean? So it's just like, it is one of those things, right? Where I, because I used to go to lesbian bars and some of my straight guy friends would come and show up and they would flirt with the girls. And I'd be like, stop doing that. And they would think it was funny because the girls were sometimes bisexual, but it was really annoying because then the space would be taken up because the bisexuals were there. The guys would show up. But then what happens if there's a less, you know what I mean? So like there's there's something to be said about being open, you know what I mean? To the fact that like some people go to certain spaces for certain vibes, right? And again, not, I don't want anything legally. I don't want like be people to be able to say like, you can't eat here. You're black. You can't eat here. You're gay. Like, I don't want that. But socially, in terms of, like, giving people space, like, in Seattle, there was, like, a people of color event, and I got invited, and some of my white friends were like, why do you get to go? And I was like, because I'm a Syrian, and they're counting that, but, like, I understand that I'm not brown, but I'm getting invited, and they were like, I don't get why you get to be invited, and I was like, I don't get why you want to go, because, like, I don't know what you have in common with these people, because at this event, it's going to be a very specific vibe. You know what I mean? And like, you're not going to vibe there anyway. So why do you want to go? And they were just like, well, I don't get why you get to go, but I can't go. And I'm like, because you're not going to be able to vibe. Like, you have to vibe and you can't vibe because like, you're going to make it weird and you're going to put people on edge. And they and like, it was just like explain to people like you're you can like you're going to ruin the vibe. But like with peace and love, it's like trying to get all my friends together in a space. Like I can get all my friends together in a space, but someone's going to ruin the vibe because they don't mesh. The energies, it's not personal. It's just the message, the energies don't mesh, you know? Enough. I mean, this idea that there are not flamboyantly dressed and very feminine looking straight men is absurd to me. This idea that this man who was confronted before anybody even knew his sexuality mm. was assumed to be straight because of how he looked and his- Girl, as if vibes aren't real. Look, I love to assume thing of, things about people. We all do it. We all do it. And like, I don't know why we're pretending like we're not assuming things about people or like guessing. Hey, you feel gay. Are you gay? Hey, you feel autistic. Are you autistic? Hey, you feel straight. Are you straight? You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like there's nothing inherently wrong as long as you don't like discriminate or hate people because of a thought in your head that you haven't like clarified.
mannerisms, I suppose, is also absurd to me. And this is what makes me realize that cosplaying minorities don't actually care about equity. They don't actually care about egalitarianism. They don't want... Discord says, so as a cis straight white man, I am being an ally by not going where my insert minority friends hang out. Yes. Like if you can't get it, it's bubbles. Like guys, when you go into the bubble, it means you have to adhere to the culture and the culture might not know how to make space for you, right? Like I don't take certain kinds of my friends to certain places because they can't vibe. Because if they show up, people will not feel comfortable because they won't know how to feel like they can be themselves. It's the same way I feel about when I hear people talk about neurodivergency on the internet, there are certain types of neuro, like the way you talk about it will tell me if I invite you over to a party with neurodivergent friends. Because if you're going to freak out over somebody having like a meltdown over like a texture sensitivity, you can't come to the party because most people won't know what to do with that. So I'm not going to invite you to the party, even though I know you're a good person. Right. So again, I think we're like, why are we pretending like there's not a vibe when all my brothers are hanging out with their friends? Why would I fucking go and ruin the vibe? Why would I go as the older sister or as the girl and ruin the vibe? Like if the vibe is guys hanging out and cracking beers and farting, why would I go? Now, sometimes I would go and maybe in categories, guys, it's OK that every event isn't for you. I don't know why we want every event to be for us anyways. Right. We're saying, is there an okayness to having a certain space for a certain vibe? Now, of course, this is a public um, like bar. So anyone could be in and out of the bar. They're asking from a social perspective, why are you in this bar? They're not asking, like, should you legally be kicked out of the bar? You know what I mean? That's not what they're saying. They're just saying, like, why are you here? Like, if my mom, my mom has said this to me a thousand times. She goes, if I'm having a Catholic event, why would you come to this event with a pro-gay shirt or a pro-choice shirt? Why are you coming to this event and ruining the vibe? Everyone I've ever talked to knows exactly what ruining the vibe is like. You're the person who stands out, right? So that's what I'm thinking this is more or less like. Like, maybe they were, like, maybe it, like, it like made people uncomfortable or maybe it's like, why are you here? It's not saying you shouldn't be here. It's like, oh, why are you here? Again, let's wait for the whole story. But that's that's where my brain is assuming this is going. Something like that. You know what I mean? want a particular group of people to have power. Instead, they want to have power. They don't actually want anything meaningful to change. They just want an exchange of the baton from somebody else's hands to their hands. I will stay that gay men going into a lesbian bar by themselves, that shouldn't happen. They shouldn't be there. Regardless, you brought a man, a cis- I mean, I don't know about that, but okay, that's like an opinion she can have, right? Het man into a safe space for queer women, where queer women feel safe because we don't have very many spaces, you know? There are not many places where queer women feel welcome and accepted and safe. And so inviting a <gasps> cishet man into one of those spaces is going to cause people to be a little bit on edge and a little bit uncomfortable. I think that's fair to say some people might be uncomfortable is fair, right? I think that's okay. But like, you know, we don't have to kick him out automatically. It's just saying like, again, like, oh, interesting that you're here. Really like to go into these queer women spaces and take it upon themselves to hit on women and make women uncomfortable and it really ruins the entire thing for everyone that it was created for. I'm so sorry to break this too. And also, I've heard the same commentary from gay men. They're sick of women in their spaces. Women go to gay clubs all the time. So many gay men I know fucking hate that. They hate women in that space. They're like, go the fuck away. So again, I think it's okay to have gay spaces where like men go to gay clubs to see men and there's no women. And I think it's okay to have gay spaces where women get to come and hang out. I think both are valid as long as it's because it's about wanting to feel safe, not wanting to exclude. It's about wanting to say like, dude, can I just fucking spend one day? You know what I mean? Hanging out. And like, I think that's really fair anybody but bars and clubs are not safe spaces they're just not bars and clubs are i think they could be i think there could they could be right i think they could be but also i understand that they're legal businesses but i do think they could be i think in an ideal world we'd find a way to make it so i do like having a women's night which by the way a lot of men hate 
a lot of men get very upset that there's like women night. Then make a boy night. You know what I mean? Like make a women boy night or a non-binary night or make a, you know what I mean? Places where people go because they are thirsty, because they want to get intoxicated in order to forget about how terrible their lives are or to have a good time. They places where people go to hook up with strangers and they places where people go to engage in casual sexual encounters with people. If you are going to go into those spaces, you need to be prepared for that. In short, at a lesbian only bar, the fantasy of this safe space, the sacred space where a woman can feel quote unquote safe, a lesbian can be just just as predatory and just as harassing as any straight white man can. If you are going to a bar or you are going clubbing with the expectation that you are entering a safe space, you will soon realize that when you go to these spaces, safety is not the key thing. Having a good time via intoxication and in some cases drugs and psychedelics is really the objective. And this leads to another reason which I don't see people talking about that much because it really doesn't feed into the narrative that lesbian spaces like clubs and bars are closing down or so infrequent. But one second, just before we get into all that, I would like to give a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, Rocket Money. As we all know, let's go Rocket Money. I'm going to mute her for a second. Um, Fishy said a lot of les a lot of LGBT bars has historically have been intended as a safe space. Exactly. Historically, LGBT bars were intended to be a safe space for people. And so I think that's what we're also forgetting. What about biker bars or dive bars? You think those aren't safe spaces for people? They just don't call it safe spaces, guys, because safe space is a construct from a bubble, right? Like dive bars, like biker bars, those are safe spaces. that They have a cultural expectation of behavior, right? 10 minute ad is it a 10 minute ad oh my god Why are there so few lesbian-only bars and why don't they turn over a profit? It's for a very realistic reason, which is that just like straight women are less likely than straight men to go clubbing and to go to bars, lesbian- Yeah, I, Maddox has all these people being judgy and I've yet to know what happened. Yeah, I'm annoyed that Kidology didn't play the videos back to back. Are you sure she plays it, guys? I don't see it in here. Oh, there it is. I think I just saw it. Yeah, it's right here. Okay, we'll see it in a bit. We're going to see the response, like why the why it even happened. But let's see. Lesbians are less likely to go to bars and to clubs than gay men. It's not because of homophobia or the desecration of some safe space. It's because lesbians would much rather stay at home. Lesbians would much rather have lesbian brunch out in the daylight where they can actually- I love lesbian brunch. She see and hear people who they're speaking to and form real meaningful connections with somebody, then engage in casual sexual encounters. Just like straight women would rather engage in meaningful connections and meaningful sexual encounters than casual sexual encounters and hookups. And this is why gay clubs and gay bars are so much more successful and are so much more prevalent in today's age of greater acceptance of LGBTQ plus people than are lesbian bars and lesbian clubs because they don't turn over the same kind of profit, because they don't attract the same kind of loyal, eager audience of people who are going to come there looking for casual sexual encounters <laughs> like men do. And Men are horn dogs, got it. And this is what feeds into that argument that lesbian spaces and lesbian communities are gentrified by. <laughs> Hannah says lesbians are busy having multiple orgasms. I mean, you know. By firstly, queer men, that is by gay men, and then by straight people who follow the gay men into those spaces because it's cool and hip and it's a new thing and trendy and all that. When lesbian bars don't turn up. Just, uh, just a reminder, it's funny that in gay clubs, gay men have to worry about women showing up and then at lesbian bars, they have to worry about men showing up. So ultimately, we're all just worried about people the club wasn't intended for. Like there are plenty of gay men that don't mind women at their clubs. There's plenty of lesbians being people that probably don't mind men at their clubs right but there's it doesn't always revolve around you so again don't we have equal say don't the people who want to go to a lesbian bar and just see women there and the gay guys who want to go to a gay bar and just see men there aren't they just as valid as the people that want to be inclusive to their straight friends like how is one less valid than the other and if they're both valid why can't we have multiple options for those spaces right because like what is inherently wrong with like going into a space expecting a vibe, you know?
And over a profit, they expand their demographic of interest, which mainly includes queer people. So gay men come in and then gay men bring all of their straight friends and straight people come in. And that's how these bars and these clubs are able to run by being fully inclusive of all people. Basically, if lesbians were into casual sex in as much as gay men are into casual sex, then this wouldn't even be a conversation and there would be lesbian only bars, lesbian only spaces that would be able to turn over a profit. Mm. Unfortunately, that is just not the case. And so this idea that there are sacred places for lesbians only, that there are bars that are lesbians only, is a fantasy for the vast majority of bars and clubs that are directed and aimed at lesbian only. Now, Ellie says, why is she framing like LGBT people are sluts who only want casual sex? No, no, no. Bar goers. Bar goers are often sluts who are like hanging out to get laid or if it's like a dive bar it's more of a chill space so I would argue that in all my clubbing years I've basically only clubbed at gay clubs and lesbian clubs all of it was sex focused all of it was alcohol focused almost none of it was a focus on anything else and if there was it was like a special night at the the bar or club so I think she's talking about that like lots I mean I could not tell you how much money I spent at bars because every shot was like fucking 15 to $30. Like we were spending so much money at these bars. And so um, I think she means bar culture, club culture, but not like bar. See, there's dive bars that are much more chill, less into the shots, much more into the beers and ciders. Then in Croatia, I was going to say, I like the bar culture here, at least the ones I've been to. They're like cafes, but with alcohol. And I've been enjoying those more, but not all the bars are like that. Just the ones my husband's been taking me to because I tell him I don't want to go to a, like a party bar. I w they have like cafes. So imagine a coffee shop, but with alcohol. It's really cool. Actually, it's like so much fun. I, I really enjoy it demographics. Sorry, editing me here. I just want to make this point even clearer by giving another example, which is a very interesting example that has recently come to the attention of the internet. And that is the opening of a lesbian only, and that is a biological lesbian, cis lesbian only bar that is opening in London later this year. This bar is being opened by feminist campaigner Jenny Watson in London later this year and is called the L Community. Now, I think that this bar and everything that it is doing is representative mm. of this point. This bar would not last long at all without heavy subsidization. And the way that it is subsidizing itself is by classing itself as a private members club. So oh. it's not actually running on a conventional Very business common. model as would any other bar or club. Mm -hmm. And this subsidization- That's how some Middle Eastern uh, relatives and friends of ours do it. They have like membership only cigar lounges and like bars and stuff is coming from the fact that it isn't actually a bar. It's a private members club, which means that members are going to likely be held to contracts. They're going to have to pay membership fees. Mm -hmm. And like with any private members club, there's likely going to be wealthy members. That mm -hmm. is probably wealthy, gender critical feminists, friends of Jenny Watson. She's probably made a lot of friends and connections due to other controversies that she's been involved in earlier this year, or I believe last year when it comes to gender critical feminism, etc. And if it does last, which I doubt it will, because I think a lot of gender criticals are a lot more talk than they are bite. Just like with activists in general, a lot more talk than bite. I don't think it will really come to as great a fruition uh, in the long term, at least. But if it does last, it will last not because it is running on a traditional business model, but because it is running on a very unconventional one. That is a private membership and a club. In short, it would not be able to brand itself as an exclusionary, segregationist club where only cis lesbians are allowed to go yeah this is difficult obviously like i want people to live in a world because you're only here for a short time feeling safe but obviously like by proxy there will be some like levels of discrimination that ends up occurring you know what i mean like you can't have a like what if you have like a muslim club that like made all women wear hijab if they came in and then you had people who were like i don't wear hijab i want to be a modern muslim it's like well you can't come in it's like well i kind of get that like there are Latin masses in Catholicism where you have to wear a veil over your hair. And I kind of feel like, yeah, I get that. Also, you're just like LARPing at the same. I think all religion is LARPing. So you're just like all agreeing to LARP. And you're like, oh, yes, master. Like this is the kingdom and I am the king. And like you're just like all LARPing some pretend game, which I love for you. And the same thing with like even lesbian bars. It's like LARPing a safe space or like pretending that like this is our third, our third space, like a way, a place away from home. Like. 
you know, eventually I think people usually get over that need to have those spaces, but also maybe they don't. I don't know. I definitely did. I'm so glad I'm past my bar days and my club days. Ugh, I'm so, oh my God. But again, when I was in those spaces at the time, I really did want women only spaces, especially since I had recently been, um, well, not recently, but I'd recently owned the fact that I had been assaulted. And so like being around men was just like really difficult and triggering. And it was even hard to be around partners. It was just hard in general. So it was kind of nice to go to women only spaces, but then like, you know, like non-binary or like, uh, What's it called when you're assigned male at birth? I guess a mis- mis- assigned male at birth people would show up looking very like man and it would like make me uncomfortable. Like that was my fault. And I took myself out of that environment because they again, it's not a safe space for like grape victims necessarily. Like it's just a grapes, a safe space for people who identify as women, which is valid. Like I want all things to exist. I want there to be a women's space that allows non-binary slash trans women who don't physically transition in a space that's safe. I like that. I want a space for women that need to be around people who appear women, you know, in any capacity. I don't know what language she used. Don't fucking cancel me. Like, I just want all to exist. You know, as we says, Brit, did you just forget how to call cis men? No, no, no. It's not a man. It's an assigned male at birth. Woman who didn't transition because they're non-binary woman. It's tra- it's very confused trans woman, but it's not trans woman. It's like a non-binary. It doesn't matter. Trans woman, non-binary, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that like, I want all these spaces to exist in a way that it's like rooted in creating a safe space and not like hating on other people. But because there's going to be deviation in every individual, it does want to it does naturally want to then spring up a new club and a new club and a new club. And then eventually you don't have enough num- num- like members to make anything work, which is also fine. Like, you know what I mean? So I think like ultimately group activities mean you need a group. And then those group activities, whether or not, you know, it's at a bar or at your house for a weekly Bible study or gay Bible study, you know, that's up to what resources you have, you know, at your disposal, you know, Bobby says, see, at least the membership model makes it more clear what the space is supposed to be. Fishy says, I guess the question, why does it need to be insert identity only? There's such a different energy from I just want to vibe versus I hate this group. So let's exclude them. I don't think it's yes. So there's a difference between I hate this group. Let's exclude them. And let's make a safe space so we can feel like we can unmask and be ourselves, which is why the difference is so nuanced and people don't know the difference. Look, we don't want a group of people creating a a safe space about hating other people, right? But that's the why. So why do you need the safe space? Well, I just want to be able to unmask. Okay, like in that case, you know what I mean? This is probably like a space for you or isn't a space for you. And like, again, you can't just like the vibe of the space is so specific and why it exists. Again, how do I? We just don't know why. So it's hard for us to imagine that it's not hateful, but it could just be about the people feeling like they can finally breathe. You know what I mean? Lots of people around the world, guys, in order to make society work, a lot of us are constantly uncomfortable. A lot of people are constantly like, oh my God, from advertisement to music on the radio to people like secondhand smoke, like all of us are doing our best to live in a society together. But a lot of people, I would argue every person has at one point in their life been uncomfortable and felt like, Jesus, I wish I could just be myself, but I can't because like this isn't a safe space for me. Whether you call it a safe space or not, I've experienced it with so many different people. I refuse to believe if this isn't a universal experience of like realizing like, oh, you're the odd one out or realizing like, shoot, like how do I, you know what I mean? How do I be myself? You know what I mean? Natalie says the tur- the turfs want to mask off lesbian bar. It does sound a little bit like that. And that's the other problem is like, obviously, we're very trans inclusive here. I really think like a- the trans experience is a real invalid experience. But again, you know, and I do think it's like turfs are probably one of the least my least. They're so I do not have a good time with turfs. Like I don't find my talking. You know what I'm saying? I've never I cannot have a friend who's a turf. Like, I'm happy to be friendly towards everybody because I think everybody has dignity and the, like, sanctity of life. But, like, 
I don't have any friends in my life that are TERFs because they're exhausting. Like TERF TERFs. Like, oh, just, oh my God. If I hear one, I just, exhausting. But I understand, right? Like I understand to an extent. I get it. Actually, yeah. TERFs are very specific. But could they have a bar that's anti-trans women and men? Um... Again, I think the legality, no, but culturally, I think you could probably make that work as long as nobody, because again, why would you even want to be in the bar with the TERFs anyways? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think people just want to force themselves like, okay, I'm sorry. It's like the gay people that want the Catholic church to marry them. You're being weird. It's like, it's like, why are you going into other people's homes and demanding they like accept you? I just think it's super fucking weird. Like legally, I think people should have rights. But, like, if we're going to let people believe in, like, invisible gods, then, like, they get to LARP, bro. Like, I don't know. It just feels like people are so unhappy and bitter. They want to force themselves into other people's lives, which is why we should have, like, a general understanding that, like, LGBT people are protected by the law. But also, like, are the religious? Like, again, you know what I mean? It's just like, ugh. If it was a traditional bar, like cubby hole and personally i don't think that subsidization will be enough before this new club the old community has to expand its membership and clientele that will probably look like expanding to other gender critical feminists to women in general but it will definitely not be in my humble opinion a cis lesbian only membership private club for very long i hope that makes mm. my point a bit clearer yes i guess Magic trip is why I was born Catholic and raised. Why could I not marry the one I love? Bro, I was raised Catholic and I was confirmed and baptized and I still didn't get to marry my husband in the church. My husband and I are not married in the church. We're secularly married. It's against the Catholic church and the Vatican and there are rules for us just to get married. Like we have to follow protocol because it's a made up thing. Like why would I force the religion to marry me just because I like what? What am I a child? Marry me. I want it. Why? I'm not. a. I don't believe in God. Like, I don't believe in the religion. If I believed in the religion, I would have married a Catholic. Like, obviously, what am I going to do? Force the church to marry us? My parents didn't even come to my wedding because we got married secularly because they're Catholics. They don't go to non-Catholic weddings. So again, like. And every Catholic bubble is different, but the if you're Roman Catholic, like there are rules it sucks i'm sure it sucks for a lot which of by the way i don't even believe in god or religions but you know they have rules of lesbians but for most lesbians that i encounter we would much rather go to as i said brunch a lesbian only brunch than go lesbian only cubbing and look like if you believe in religion that's fine but it's made up to me so even wanting to be married and a thing that i think is made up is like stupid but if you want to do it and you believe in that thing that's made up you do you but forcing people to do it when you don't even believe in it in the first place is so fucking weird. Like, you know what I mean? I just don't get it. And bar hopping. Like you say, I don't understand why she was upset. Like there's not a rule that men can't be in there. Like, no, there isn't an official rule that men aren't allowed to go in. Like straight men aren't allowed to go in. However, it's pretty, it's pretty heavily implied. <laughs> Who is it implied by though? Because let's- Look, if you can make up a religion, you should be able to make up a lesbian only bar. You know what I mean? MMM says, sorry about your parents. Nah, it's fine. They're Catholic. What are you going to do? It's like asking my vegan friends to eat meat for what, you know? Kayla says you can make a reformed church. Exactly. If you can make up a religion and start a church, you know what I mean? Like, why are you even doing it? Guys, why are you spending your one time on earth making up religions? Why not just chill the fuck out, bro? You can do you. But you're never going to get me on your side to be like, let's just make, make up a church so we can get married. It's like, do you even believe in this religion? Where do you think it came from? Like, it sounds weird. Like, why are you LARPing so hard, bro? You know what I mean? Like, that's weird. Magic says it just sounds so harsh because we are just looking for a place within the communities we were born. Nope, not me. I'm the black sheep. I obviously, the community wasn't made for me. That's why I pop bubbles. I'm not going to ask the community to change so I feel more comfortable because I don't want them to do that to me either. So I get it, but I don't get it. Like, right? Like, what do I want to be a part of the community I was born into? If like the community has a vibe and a culture, why do they have to change just because I'm the one who stands out? Seems weird, dude. You know? 
lesbians come in all different shapes and sizes, all different opinions. So who's making these rules? Because this feels like you are making an arbitrary rule about mm. something that you feel quite strongly about, which is that straightness is sort of categorically bad or has very negative connotations to it. That's not the assumption. That's the wrong assumption. It's not that straightness is bad. It's, it's that we want a space to, it's that people want a space to chill in outside of this energy. It's not that straightness is bad. Obviously, we work every day. People, people are straight every day. You work with them. You don't think straight people are bad. You know? Ted with the super chat. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Says, thanks for being awesome. Brittany, I followed your coverage of the recent Vosh drama, and I think you were pretty much on point. I appreciate that. That was a difficult one. I appreciate that. Again, we're not talking about legally. We're talking about culturally, right? You know, we're talking about culturally, not legally, right? But, and this is all based on stereotypes, especially stereotypes that regard profiling somebody by how they look, as opposed to a consensus that has been built by a community of very heterogeneous people who have very different opinions and perspectives on the matter. Not even Cubbyhole agrees with you on trying to create this quote unquote safe space. Yeah, they don't, doesn't mean they're wrong though. I want the argument for why they're wrong to want it. Do you get what I'm saying? I get all of this is correct. Cubbyhole's right. Kidology's right. The people who want men out of the bar, right? Everybody is right. In what way are they wrong to just want to come to a, a, a assumed women's space and just be around women? You know what I mean? Like what, what part of that is wrong to say like, that would be nice to have that kind of space. Like, is that wrong? Because like, I don't think you can make the argument that it's wrong if they just want to relax and have like their tits out and like a safe space. Like, I just can't see how you could argue that's wrong. It's like a women's only spa. You go there expecting a very specific vibe. You know what I mean? I can understand that. Like, I would go to a women's spa with like a trans woman there. I can also understand transphobes feeling very uncomfortable around that. But in general, if I ran a woman's spa, trans women would be able to be there, right? But there would be a vibe, you know, there'd have to be a vibe check. But if someone's like, oh, my friend wants to come and he's here with me. No, you can't come. But also a woman's spa usually has gender like separated things for a reason because like people are naked and there's like all these rules. But some businesses are allowed to discriminate on gender. So maybe bars should or queer people at a bar. Legally, you cannot deny them entry, um, but it seems it seems like a pretty obvious conclusion to draw to not bring those- Yeah, you're right. There are women's only clubs in New York. Exactly. I don't know what we're thinking, like why can't we make this space? Just make sure it's for a reason of creating a safety and not the reason for discriminating. Just make sure that when the group is meeting, they're not hating on men. Make sure they're just, real you know what I mean? It'd be different. Like as long as people are congregating and they're not like, down with men like as long as it's like for a relaxed space you know what i mean those people into these spaces and to make oh yeah a woman's only gym i love the idea of a woman's only gym and a man's only gym i love that fucking idea you know men get uncomfortable working out in front of women too you guys do know that right the men some men have deep insecurities about their bodies and deep shame and they don't want women looking at them because they're insecure but feel no way about men doing it I think people should have spaces to do this. Now, of course, whether or not it makes money, that's secondary. But I do think generally it's not necessarily bad. As long as, again, once you're in the space, you're not thinking, how do we take down women? How do we destroy the woman? You know, how do I destroy men? You know what I mean? Even worse, this lesbian bar is one of only three in the entirety of New York. And it has that's a crazy. capacity of 75 only 75 people can go in there. And you took up one of those space with a cis het male friend to come say hi, which is- Well, it's fine if he's just saying hi for a second. Like, you know what I mean? Just say hi and go. Bullshit. And if the club is, if the bar is empty that night, I also think it's okay if he sat and took up one of the spaces. If the bar is empty, if it's really crowded, no. But if it's empty, that's fine. Because he had to wait in line to get in there. I know there was a fucking line to get in there. He had to- Do we know that? Wait in line to get in there. There's no way he just went in to- Do we know that though? 
say hi. Okay, firstly, how do you know this? This is such an assumption. Exactly, Z. How does she know this? How do you know that there was or wasn't a line? This is pure assumptive argumentation. It makes absolutely no sense. This is just your bias playing in. And that's fine. All human beings are biased. But admit True. that and acknowledge that to yourself and to your audience. Don't just claim that you know something when you clearly don't know anything. Because this makes your entire argument fruitless and baseless. Mm. And nobody's going to believe you. What I also find so interesting about this argument is that this kind of argument can be and has been used by lesbians lesbians and by people who are then deemed to be transphobic when they say for instance uh -oh. that a transbian that is a trans lesbian is taking up the space of a lesbian that is a cis lesbian and this has been a very contentious argument within the queer community for some time and I've especially seen it going speed dating rather serially for the past few months what I've noticed and what has happened is that typically there's a divide between 70% cis lesbians and 30% trans lesbians. Now, based on the queer Kiwi's line of argumentation, couldn't a cis lesbian make a perfectly valid argument that a transbian is taking up the space of other cis lesbians who could otherwise be there? But according to the arguments and expectations of the day and of these events, that would be transphobic and discriminatory. So by that logic, how is this not discriminatory? How is this not being heterophobic to somebody who may come into, say, a queer space and then Therefore, in that space is a minority, that is, they are heterosexual, and in that space they are a minority. So in the same way that transbians are a minority in the lesbian space, surely this straight cis heteronormative white man, based on appearances, is a minority in this queer space. And I want to return to this point. Okay, first of all, we don't want trans women around transphobes. So first and foremost, I don't want my trans friends going into environments with hostile lesbians. So that's first and foremost. Two, I think it is fine for, I mean, again, we have to, can, we have to, we live in a world and the world has different belief systems, okay? Religious people, lesbians, whoever, there's gonna be some conflict between like what I believe and what you believe and like what is reasonable. Again, we don't want white people gathering in a club where they create plots to kill black people. We don't want black people gathering in a club where they make plots to kill white people. We don't want anyone gathering in a club to kill the thing that they think is bad. But if we want to create safe spaces for people to feel like themselves, rooted in some sort of alienation, just to feel like they can breathe, whether you're neurotypical or neurodivergent or religious or black or white or whatever, there could be an option for that. But because human beings are sort of motivated, I think, by their dislike of someone more than even the love of themselves, it tends to come out discriminatory. So again, I'm not opposed to people having a space that fits their belief system about the world. But I am concerned about people gathering in a space because the mob is crazy in which they breed hate and dislike for another group of people to the point of taking action against those people. So obviously that's our concern. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily that you're gathering. It's a possibility that you're gathering to form an activity around pursuing per people in order to harm them. Something like that, you know? Kay says the fact that this is a topic of a convo is so human. How dare you not let, let us hang out with you? Exactly. It feels very much like I want to hang out with you and like consent doesn't matter. And again, like, that's why, like, the diverse, that's why I say, like, I don't want to be a part of your cliques. I don't want to hang out with you in public. I don't want to hang out with people because nobody understands how just to respect differences. You know what I mean? Like, no judgment. I just don't want to, like, you know what I mean? I just don't want to hang out with you guys. Like, it's too stressful, you know? Yippie says, at what point does a safe space become a hate group? It's hard to determine if you're using this argument. Like, what about safe spaces for white people? I think there could be a safe space for white people. It's hard to imagine it, but I think it would be more focused around culture and, and not whiteness of skin. In the same way that black only spaces or brown only spaces tends to be around culture and letting go of a mask, then like, um, like again, it's different because I know there are spaces for ethnic white groups, like an Irish group or whatever, you know, what's the typical Scottish group, whatever, they, everyone always brings that up. Something like that could be more than reasonable. Or there could be religious things or other things. You know what I mean? So I think like that's reasonable.
because it's about celebrating something. Um, but it's just often in America when white people gather, it's usually because they're hating. It is what it is. Like, white people got to stop. Like, they got to change that stereotype. They got to start gathering to, like, be positive. Because right now, every time white people get together and gather, somebody be killing somebody. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, you know? So again, I, I think it's about, you know, it, you know, Ingrid says safe space for white people is like the Norwegian festivals we have here in Minnesota. There you go. Perfect. Love it. There you go. Something like that is fine. Like, I just don't see a problem with that. You know, go to line dancing. Okay. It's like, yeah, go to a country bar and going line dancing. And then some asshole comes in and starts like doing something different, like a di like ballroom dancing. It's like, why are you ruining the flow? That's what it can feel like. It can feel like that with orientation because even with orientation comes like cultural, like uh, history, like Fishy said earlier, gay spaces were safe spaces. Gay bars were safe spaces for gay people. So it is difficult when you come into that space and then you act straight. Straightness is a culture. You know how I know? Because straight clubs are different than gay clubs. Straight bars operate differently than gay bars. Straight, I do not like straight bars or, or it, if it wasn't different, we like it really makes a difference orientation is also rooted in culture how you came out the history and your relationship with it not all people are neutral towards their own orientation Kelly just just made a whole video about how she hates being a lesbian that vibe is a very specific vibe it's not all people feel that way it's a good way to feel because it's your way of feeling but it's not everybody's so again like okay there's an if okay like if straight bars were the same as gay bars the world would look different, but they're not. They're different. They feel different. The vibe is different. The demographics are different. Why would it, why would people feel like, you know what I'm saying? And when it comes to the response from the woman who called out and essentially discriminated against this cishet male for being in a lesbian space, because I think this is so telling as to why cosplaying minorities are really never at peace. And I also would like to add in the part where she's like, I, as a straight woman, go to male gay bars all the time. Why? And she's straight, bro. So straight woman brings in a straight guy, mm, two straights in a gay space. Mm. Why isn't that a problem? Why am I allowed there when straight men aren't allowed into lesbian bars? I don't think straight women should be going to gay bars either. <laughs> I mean, I kind of agree with her to an extent. It depends on the vibe. Not literally shouldn't be going like legally. But yeah, like I said, in my, tw in my 20s when I was trying to just date women, going to specifically gay or le or going to lesbian bars, not gay bars, lesbian bars or lesbian dance clubs. And then when you're dancing with a woman and she's like, just so you know, I'm straight. It's like, okay, dude, why are you here? But then I get it. Like, I get it too. And that's the problem is like, we're all here for different reasons. So of course there's going to be conflict. I don't think it's wrong to feel frustrated that the one space you were hoping to meet other queer people, you don't, you end up being straight people. How is that that shocking? How is that not like a totally understandable feeling? <laughs> and this, this is where I know that you are cosplaying your minority status because unlike actual minorities, you are able to abstract yourself from reality without any consequence or any meaningful ramifications to your being or to yourself or to your minority status. And that is because you don't have to engage meaningfully or impactfully with that reality. It doesn't actually impact you. You saying that you don't think that straight women should be allowed in lesbian only bars either is a pure abstraction from the reality that these bars rely on the patronage of all people it that's different that's those are totally different arguments z yes that is the that's the money argument we're talking about the feelings argument that's all we're talking about is the feelings argument this is all about feelings this has nothing to do with how much the bar is making who cares that's a money argument that's a why you what is this a capitalist meeting we don't care how the bar is doing we want to know how the people feel again like Nobody, I don't care about the bar. Like, I care about the fact that, like, these people are having this, like, again, maybe because I saw the discourse on TikTok and I've been really thinking about it. Like, anyways, we still need to hear from the other woman. The woman wasn't asking, hey, why are you at this gay bar? Do you know you're not giving money to them? Like, that wasn't it. It was, like, a question of feelings. This is a feelings conversation that I think needs to be understood as one, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, my God. I'm kind of getting bored. 
in order to just stay afloat. For the reasons that I said before about the difference between how men and women go out at night, men are also more likely to spend more money on drinks and at bars than women are. The reality is that these lesbian only safe spaces. Yeah, and he says, I think she's saying that this clientele is essential to keep the bar running in the first place. I don't care. It has nothing to do with the original sentiment from the person. Nobody, that doesn't matter. It does not play a role in this conversation. She's having two different conversations now, right? Like this has nothing to do with the original conflict. If, if the sacrifice that lesbians have to make for their bars to stay afloat is like men have to be in there, then that's a conversation we can have, but that's totally separate from the initial issue are above everything else, not social justice institutions and safe spaces. They are businesses working and functioning within a free market where they have to make a profit in order to stay afloat. That yeah, but we know that. Wait. That is the reality. And that is the priority above all of this branding. Cubby Hole, like all bars, especially queer bars, have this very good branding of being safe spaces, of being places where they prioritize the safety of the people who patronize them. But above all- Okay, so Z isn't explaining it to the person. She's explaining it to the audience, right? Because like, Okay. Else and above all of this branding and all of this gloss, they are ultimately businesses that are trying to make money. And like it or not, to make money, they have to appeal to a wider demographic of people sure. than lesbians. That is just the way that it is. Sure. I'm a part of many <clears throat> meetup lesbian only groups. And I will tell you that 90% of the events that are organized, that are arranged, are non club and non bar related. Lesbians like to go on hikes. They like brunch they like game nights they like movie nights and they like going to the theater and most of the events that are arranged at bars and at clubs that is the 10 percent that are arranged at bars and clubs okay. are typically either in just normal bars and clubs where everybody goes or a room is rented out for the lesbian only event or they are inclusive of everybody that is of queer men of queer women of straight people whatever because they know that that is how they're going to make money for these events straight people you have all of the bars all of the bars are your bars can you leave ours alone to us please <laughs> the amount of straight women that go into gay bars to feel safe away from straight men is quite astounding there's quite a lot of them who do that and then will get like upset when they are hit on by queer women and even if that's not you even if you just go to a gay bar just to feel safer away from straight men. Now straight men have like caught on to that and know that straight women go there to escape being hit on by straight men. So now gay bars are overrun by straight people who just are privileged enough to be able to take up all of the spaces. And this is why I say that you cannot make bars and clubs safe spaces. They're not safe spaces. Like they but just... they were. They were safe spaces. They have been safe spaces. You can't say you can't do it. You can do whatever you want. You can literally change genders. You can literally like make money. You can literally kill yourself. You can literally do whatever you want. Of course, you can make a bar a safe space. Bars are literally like there's why that's why I don't even understand this argument. I've been bar hopping my whole 20s. Every bar has a different vibe, expectation of clothes, music, behavior. You can absolutely make a bar a safe space by having an ex in a a safe space is also creating a predictability to the space. So if I go to this safe, if I go to this space, I can assume this predictability of action from space. That is what it also a safe space is. A safe space is like creating a vibe and saying, when I go here, this is going to be the vibe and I feel safe with this vibe. If you change the vibe, it changes the space. That's why the vibe matters. Okay. Thank you. It's not. And humans don't function on the basis of what is the most politically correct thing to do. When you go out at night, you're thinking about how fun of a night you can have. You're not thinking about being politically correct. You're not thinking about social justice. You're just thinking about getting wasted and hopefully hooking up with somebody. And that's why so few lesbians go out. That's why I'd rather go to lesbian brunch than go lesbian clubbing. Please just leave us something. All of the bars, all of the clubs, they belong to you already. Why do you need to come in? Now, if this girl who's talking 
is told by all the club owners, hey, we need to get like more lesbians showing up or we have to like invite other people in. I think that's valid too. If you can't make the money, it's fine. That's like a different part of it. You know what I mean? But I think there's like, I don't know, something to this where I think I would go to more bars if I could like predict the space, but probably not too because I don't want to go out past 8 p.m. You know what I mean? But if there was like a lounge, like I have this dream of creating like a like a coffee shop space where people can come and read books and drink alcohol, but it's not like about getting drunk. It's about having conversation. And yes, the vibe would naturally keep certain people away. Even on my own channel, I tried to curate a very specific vibe. I do not make it a safe space for very specific kinds of people to feel comfortable here on purpose. I don't want you here. Okay, like I don't want you here. I'm trying to create a safe space even on my own channel, which is a YouTube channel. How do I do that? Reverse psychology, right? Language uses. I choose certain languages. Like I even speak a certain way to make sure the people I don't want in my audience aren't here because I don't want you here. Okay, so when people are like, oh, Brittany, I don't feel comfortable in your space. I'm like, great. It's working. Get the fuck out. But it's still a public space. They can come and go as they want. I mean, I can block them too. But yeah, like there are vibes I don't want in my space. You know what I mean? So again, I don't think there's anything wrong with creating a vibe for a space. The question is, how do you do it? You know what I mean? How do you do it? And how do you do it without being cruel or unnecessarily mean or you know what I mean? Take our stuff off of us. You have all of them. And if you feel unsafe there and it's like not enjoyable, I'm really sorry. Like that sucks, but that doesn't really give you the right to come into our safe spaces and make our safe spaces feel unsafe. And again, this is an abstraction from reality. All the bars don't belong to straight people. The few bars that are there for queer people don't belong to queer people. These bars and clubs belong to the owners of these bars and clubs. Weird take. Weird take. Weird take. Weird take. How much bar hopping has Z done? Is that is that a UK thing again? The weird take. Maybe it's an American thing. Maybe we're being too American about this. Because like bars also belong to football like vibes. Like if you go to Milwaukee and you do bar hopping, like it's a beer, beer, football vibe, like Midwest vibes. It's very specifically different than other cafes or other bars or other like organized, like again, like maybe this is a bubble thing culturally. Yeah, maybe we're like, maybe this is a weird case as kid is starting to lose the plot by going into the business argument. Yeah, the business argument is weird because like businesses create with a clientele in mind and the clientele builds the business. Huh. Interesting. Hubs. They're businesses. They're not social justice entities. Mm. I just really don't understand. But that's not true, right? Like a lot of gay bars just start off that way. Isn't she also autistic? Seems very literal. She is not, to her knowledge, autistic. So. And how like you as a woman have come into like the safe. Yeah, Josephine says people literally move to different cities to enjoy specific bars. Literally true. Literally true woman's space and felt the need to invite a man into it when you are already the like in C i'm sorry in seattle like bars were so specifically designed for a very specific vibe it was really cool actually i learned so much about bar culture there but maybe that's just seattle maybe that's just america maybe that's just the midwest you know yes in this space so forgive me if a straight woman doesn't like going to straight bars because her friends may be all queer for instance they may all be lesbians and so she goes with them to a queer bar if straight women go to queer bars because they just prefer the music or they prefer the drinks i would say that based on my experience um Hold on, Mantis, you said, I think she's trying to get people to detach from identity and entitlement. You can't detach from identity when the bar is lesbian or the bar is gay or the bar is um, uh, Nobu or the bar is like fancy or the bar is specific. Like the bar thrives on pushing the identity as the branding, therefore asking the the patrons to remove their identity from a place that is called like queer friendly is very strange because that's what distinguishes it from a regular bar which is default straight or neutral so 
to ask the patrons to take away the, they wouldn't go to your bar then. The only reason they're at your bar is because it's gay. Why else would we go to that bar? You know what I mean? Otherwise, we just go to any old bar. And it's probably not the gay bar. People purposely pick out the gay bars for the identity relationship because it's going to be a safer space for you to be gay and you know the 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 owner is going to defend your status there. So it feels kind of weird to encourage people not to focus on their identities at a lesbian bar. of clubbing recently i found that the queer bars have far more interesting and vivacious drinks and options and a far more interesting clientele as well as a far more interesting and welcoming staff and bar staff so i can understand why so many straight people go there especially when all of these queer bars advertise themselves as being open and welcoming to everybody including straight people who are included in that umbrella of everybody said yeah and to be fair and when it's straight people get get there you know if there's not if there's not too many of them they're not going to totally ruin the vibe but it might put, put people on edge guys because they have an expectation when they go into places straight woman shouldn't go there because she feels safer there because she enjoys it more because she likes the drinks or the ambiance because her friends are there because well tough luck for you you're straight that's your sexuality your sexual orientation which you can't choose but now you're being discriminated against because of that this regrettably makes no sense whatsoever yeah, profiling is, oh, again, you're... I hate these arguments. Now, what I found most telling and most interesting about this was the response video made by the woman oh, who here we approached go. this straight man at the bar. Now, based on how the queer... Josephine said, I mean, straight bars low-key don't want gay people there, especially if the place, uh, if the places where romantic and sexual interaction is the goal. For sure, bro. Like, literally for sure. You know, it just depends. That's the thing. Is like... Uh, every space wants the right clientele for this. If you have a football bar, like you guys ever been to like a, a sports bar? Sports bars have a vibe. They don't want, they want it. It's a vibe. It's very specific clientele, a very specific vibe. Sports bars are very specific, right? And like they don't, they're, again, it's fine. It's just like, I don't understand why we're pretending like vibes don't change the clientele slash the people who are there slash the people feeling comfortable being there. You know what I mean? If sports bars were then stereotyped to being a gay thing, straight men would stop going to them. Who were homophobic, of course. Okay, let's see the original video. Kiwi responded and based on how TikTok responded, I assumed that the straight man was probably doing something untoward, such as trying to riz up or flirt with queer woman who had rejected his advances and he just wasn't getting the message or he wasn't taking no for an answer or he was just being a right nuisance. No, in fact, absolutely none of this. So let's take a look at what happened according to the woman who called him out for being there. What are you doing here? To be honest, I was a little taken aback because as a straight woman. So that video is actually about me. I'm that lesbian. So I just wanted to provide some context on what happened uh, from my perspective. So I was at Cubby Hole, been going to this bar for eight years since I moved to New York. I actually met my wife there. Nice. Um, I was waiting in the bathroom line, minding my own business. And there was a dude standing in front of the bathroom. Um, I tapped him on his shoulder. I was like, excuse me, you know, you're kind of in the way, whatever. I was not trying to start conflict, anything like that. He turns around. He seemed a little bit grumpy. I love how, according to her, he seemed a little grumpy. He may have been grumpy, sure, but what does that even mean? Did he like just look at you funny because you tapped him on the shoulder? I think- What well, was he waiting in line for the bathroom or was he waiting for somebody else? She obviously came in slightly like, you know, saying like he, like he was in the way. I'm not sure that she could assume that. So maybe she came in hostile. Anybody who gets tapped on the shoulder by a stranger and is told that they're in the way or that they've done something wrong when they're just standing there is going to probably look at you a bit funny sure. or is just going to give you a look, obviously, because, you know, sure. you're trying to get their attention by touching them. So <laughs> what does seem a little grumpy mean? I'm not getting any information from that. But what I am getting is that when he looked at you, you decided to go in and say, are you even here with anybody? He turns around he seemed a little bit grumpy so i was like okay dude uh are you even here with anyone like what are you doing in this bar you in the words of sort of modern lingo about this microaggressively responded to him looking at you because you tried to grab his attention 
and your microaggression came in the form of questioning why he was there. That is whether he was there with somebody based on how he looked, which according to you, I guess he didn't look queer enough. I guess he didn't look flamboyant enough. Why are we acting like that's not a thing? Straight people look straight, gay people look gay. It's a thing. There's actually data coming out to say that our, even our bone structure is different, so. He didn't look gay enough. He just looked too vanilla. And so that justifies you asking him about his business, which has nothing to do with you. And this is another thing that I find very, very telling and very annoying. And he points to his friend, a girl who seems pretty queer to me, uh, not the girl who made that other video. And she's like, he's with me. I I'm like, okay, cool. Again, this scene, a girl who seems pretty queer to me. What's yeah, like, I don't know what Kidology is doing right now, but like people, I obviously, I love doing this. I love literally pointing out that people look gay or straight or autistic. I'm like, you autistic? Because people look differently. I'm telling you, I pattern recognition is my favorite thing. And I see the patterns in people. They look interesting, Okay. There's a difference in that. It's a difference. And I'm so excited for science to show us, but like they're already doing studies on this. What does that even mean? All of this is based on proof. Tim Dillon does not act gay, but he is. Have you seen Tim Dillon? I watched Tim Dillon. That is the queerest man I have ever seen. That is the gayest man I've ever seen in my life of people on their physical appearance. You know nothing about somebody based on how they look. This is exactly the thing that actual minorities have been trying to fight against or to speak out against. No, dude. Like, no, dude. No, dude. Gay people, we know we all look... No, dude. No. No, she's miss... Oh, she's like... Mm, okay. Because they get profiled based on how they look, based on how they... No, they get profiled on who they fuck, bro. Like... Bro, no, that is not, that is not the issue with being profiled, you know? Um, Kay says this is so normal. We all have assumptions and asking a question to clarify is a literal process of uh, learning. You think something and you test to verify. Yeah, she did come in hot at the bathroom uh, inter in exchange. So, okay, let's give her that at least. Caitlin says, not going to lie, I always thought most of gay guys looked gay, like in the face, not all, but I always thought that I could tell. It's a thing. Bisexual also looks like a thing. No, I'm telling you, like, guys, in neurotypical and neurodivergent, they look like I can not always, I'm not always correct, but I watch people and I'm like, gay, neurodivergent, autistic, ADHD. And then I wait to see if I'm right. That's why I like to test myself because I am right over 90% of the time. And that's why my ego is so big because I'm fucking, I guessed it, bitch. I knew it, bitch. I'm not always right. Sometimes I fuck up. Sometimes I misremember. But like, people look away. People look. Okay. Zent because they are discriminated against on that basis. And you are doing the exact same thing, but you can't see that because you're cosplaying your minority status, which means you don't have to engage with reality or the meaningful ramifications of your actions because, well, this is all just exteriors to you, clearly. I turn around, um, continue to wait in line, really had to pee. And um, then this guy comes to me and he goes, well, if I wasn't here with someone, would that be a problem? Okay, so now he's hostile. So she was hostile. He decided to be hostile. So now they're fighting, right? Big D says, can you identify Jews as well? Not always. Lots of people think I'm Jewish. So no, all people stereotype people. You can't always know if someone's Jewish because you might be a Syrian. But nice try. But yes, people look like things. People look like a stereotype, guys. That's why they exist. I don't know why you're all playing games with me right now. Okay. Natalie says, do you think it's a good thing to do that, though? I don't think it's necessarily harmful. I don't think humans being human is necessarily harmful. I don't think it's necessarily harmful, okay? Because I don't want to hurt you if I find it out. If you're like, oh my gosh, this person looks Jewish. Are you Jewish? Well, are you going to hurt me if I say yes? If you're not and you're like, no, I'm Jewish too. I would love to hang out with you. Okay, cool. Great. Or like, hey, what are you doing here? It's like, this is an opportunity for us to bond. But obviously, it could also be an opportunity for us to fight. And then that's what's scary is like, why are you looking at me like I'm different? You know? Um, like, don't act like social constru constructs aren't real. Literally, don't act like they're not real, bro. Starvo says, by your logic, Brit, we should all stick to our own bubbles and never venture out of them. Stereotype about others without connecting with them. Nobody is born a metalhead or a football fan or anything. I think you're misunderstanding me. That's not what I'm saying, but I would argue most people don't leave their bubbles and most people do act like that. Obviously, most people don't care about other people. So yeah, I just don't think you're hearing me. That's not what I'm saying. But most people aren't going to do that anyways. It's very historically improbable for you to leave 200 mile radius of where you were born. Only recently did people really venture out. 
Yes, most people live and die in the place they're born. That is what's typical. It is very abnormal to pop your bubbles. It is very abnormal to even care what other people are doing on the other side of the planet. It is very, that's why there's a disconnect here in this conversation because they're already aggressive with each other. So now he's picking a fight. So now he's an asshole because he's not being courteous to her. He's not being the bigger person. He's going down to her level. So now they're going to fight. And I say, absolutely. Like, yes, it would be a problem. This guy, the girl in that video. So she said, yes, it would be a problem if you were here alone, which by the way, she's allowed to have that opinion. Just like people who think men shouldn't go to Disneyland alone, which I think is kind of bullshit. Do you know there's a group of people that think men should not go to Disneyland alone, but it's perfectly okay for women to go to Disneyland alone? Why do you think that stereotype exists, guys? Hands in the class. Why do you think women and men don't want men going to Disneyland alone? Hmm. What stereotype do you think that they are thinking about? A single man going to Disneyland alone, creepy. Single woman going to Disneyland alone, less creepy. Hmm, which stereotype do you think they're concerned about? Which thing comes into their head when they think about that? Hmm, which stereotype? And is it correct? I don't think it's correct. I think single guys could go to Disneyland and have a fun time. But hmm, where do you think that stereotype comes from? Do you think it's statistics? Where do you think that's from? Okay. So yes, she's staying in opinion. She has a problem. Okay. Yeah, it says a man or a group of men. No, a man. A single man. Okay. A single man at Disneyland. Weird or not weird. Okay. A single man at a lesbian bar. Weird or not weird. That's what he asked. He goes, if I was here alone, would that be a problem? So a single man alone at a lesbian bar. Weird or not weird. Some other girls, they all jump at me and they're like, what? Like, why would you say that? That's so messed up. Because it's weird. It's like, why would you go alone to a lesbian bar? Are you jerking off to girls like making out? Like, what are you doing here? Blah, blah. These people start coming at me and I'm just in the bathroom. I'm there celebrating a friend's birthday. I want literally nothing to do with straight people, which is why I'm in cubbyhole in the first place. Again, I like to just mention the safe space rules and regulations of cubbyhole on their website for everybody to see because he was being discriminated against because of how he looked. And, you know, I'm just like, hey, OK, this is a queer bar. We don't have a lot of spaces. I've been coming to this bar for a long time. It's a special place for me. It's also a safe place for me. And I have seen a lot of cis straight guys come into this bar and cause problems like it's a known thing it happens at cubbyhole it happens at henrietta's it happens at stonewall there are straight dudes that come into these bars specifically because they're trying to pick up girls and this is so interesting this is the point that i wanted to get back to this okay so she has a fear and she's worried and she got a little defensive and protective i think that's a fair perspective it's interesting that nobody gives a fuck about that right like i feel like i would get that right away I'd be like oh yeah that makes sense like, I get it, you know? So again, okay, I don't think it's that weird to be like, are you a single dude at a lesbian bar? Maybe it's inappropriate to you socially, but, you know, we're very autistic here, so we don't really care what's appropriate socially. <laughs> assumption that people place onto other people because of how they look. And that is when you just stereotype people because they look a certain way. And so you assume preemptively without any evidence, without any justification beyond your stereotype that they are going to behave in a certain way. And but he did. He picked a fight with her, too. He did. He did act in the stereotypical straight guy way. He picked a fight with her. That was the problem. She was worried he was going to pick like he was going to be an issue in the space. He wasn't an issue until she got a little hostile with him. So he got other hostile with him and then she got ganged up on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody wanted to understand each other in that moment. But she did back off after he explained herself. So fuck all of you. She created the first initial moment. Then she backed off. Then he got aggressive. Then she got basically like piled on. Like it escalated because of a group of people. She de-escalated. After she got upset, she de-escalated. So then they escalated, which is exactly what her worry was in the first place. But also she went in a little hot. That happens too. Gonna do a certain thing. This is why in the UK, black men get profiled by the police on the street. When they Don't bring up racism, kid. It's a different example. Excuse me. This is a different example. No, this is, no, this is, I refuse. 
I can't. This is not the same example. Yes, stereotyping can be bad, but also you have a lived experience. Your intuition tells you something. You know you feel a way about people. I don't want people to stereotype in order to cause people pain. I think it's okay if you stereotype in order to protect yourself though. So if you're gonna protect yourself and be like, I don't know about this space, I don't feel good here, leave. Even if everyone there is innocent to you, leave, right? I don't care if you stereotype to protect yourself. I care if you stereotype to hurt other people. Okay, she didn't hurt him. She asked him a question slightly hostily. I agree with you. Okay, and then she backed off, right? Totally fucking different than stereotyping black men and arresting them or thinking they're bad. That's you harming them. Don't let your stereotypes hurt other people. But if you're using it to protect yourself, then protect yourself, but not at the expense of somebody innocent you know nothing about. Okay, totally different they're just walking and doing their business because of stereotypes and preemptively judging people based on how they look this kind of response would have made sense to me if this guy we also okay i judged that my gamer husband would be a good husband to me because he was a gamer boy i stereotyped gamer boys as being good husbands to queer people because they're often if they understand queerness pretty great partners to queer people you can stereotype for good too. I love a gamer boy. Why? Because that stereotype of the right kind of gamer boy tends to be very good allies and they tend to be discriminated against in their own way as men because they don't often fit the stereotype of a man, a man. So they often are more of an ally to women. And that's why I stereotype gamer boys is like, if they're nice gamer boys, really good boyfriends. If they're mean gamer boys, they're horrible boyfriends. They're heavily misogynistic. If it's a mean gamer boy, misogynistic. If it's a nice gamer boy, great partner, especially to a bisexual, pansexual girl, right? You know, Mantis says, I think there's an element of hypocrisy here being focused on. Do you think that, Brittany? I'm not sure. I think, I think she's trying to make a pretty good argument, but the dilemma is like there's not a clearness of the why. She's being a little too simple the why is much more complex. We stereotype for good and bad reasons. Stereotype for good reasons, not for bad reasons. And like, that's the difference is like the lesbian was concerned for a good reason that a single man was in the space, right? Just like a woman would be reasonable to stereotype that a single man is at a park full of kids. I think that's a reasonable stereotype. But also, you can't assume he's a threat because you don't know him. So go up to him, talk to him, be like, hey, how are you? Do you have a kid here? What do you do? What's going on? You know, and then find out why he's there. Don't assume he's there for malicious reasons, but maybe go up to him and say, hey, like, what do you do? Like, do you have kids? You know, because you're trying to protect your kids. She's trying to protect her space. Okay. So again, like, yeah, don't discriminate because of your stereotype, but also protect yourself because the stereotype is called a pattern of recognition. Like we recognize a pattern and we have a stereotype for that pattern, which certain people will fit into categorically, but not all people because people aren't a monolith. Guy had been standing at the bar trying to chat up lesbians who were rebuffing his advances and saying, no, we are not interested. This response would have been perfectly adequate in my opinion, but this man was just standing waiting to go to the bathroom or waiting for his friend who'd gone to the bathroom. He wasn't doing anything. He wasn't talking to anybody. He wasn't disrupting anybody. You purposefully disrupt. Well, it sounded like he was probably standing in the doorway and she wasn't sure if like he was waiting for the bathroom. And it sounded like he wasn't waiting for the bathroom, but for someone in the bathroom, which means he was in the way of the bathroom and she wasn't sure if he was in line for the bathroom. Which, by the way, lots of gay and lesbian and queer spaces I've been to have gender-neutral bathrooms. So there's also that. Interrupted, as Gen Z like to say, your peace by making his business, which was none of your business, your business. And this is something that I've seen at speed dating events. When cis lesbians decide to make the business of transbians doing nothing except trying to just have a good time and meet new people and make friends and maybe get a match with somebody, their business. They make it their business when it needn't be their business. Why are you going to worry about that 30% of transbians you're not even interested in in the first place when you could be enjoying the company? True enjoying the fun times with because people have trauma dude they have fucking expectations of behavior and when they don't get it look how many people are like i don't like the way you say autist i don't like the way people say this i don't like the way you say this i don't like the way you say acoustic i don't like the way you say this we all have reasons we're not going to get along figure it out figure out if you're going to get along with these people or not and it might not be your space dude not all gamers get along not all DD players get along not all black people get along we're not all going to get along Okay.
So we have to figure out, am I in an environment where I'm going to get along with these people or not? And then be chill, bro. Be chill. 70% of cis lesbians who are there. And this is an example of picking your battles. Something which cosplaying minorities just do not understand. Actual minorities pick their battles. Transbians, who are, in my opinion, actual minorities, pick their battles. They go to these events. They know that they are minority. They know that it's a hard place for them to navigate and be in. That there's just a lot of things and a lot of hurdles. But having spoken to a lot of transbians at these speed dating events, it's very clear that they enjoy going to them. They know that they may have some negative encounters they know that they are probably not going to get matches or the matches that they hoped for but they go and they meet new people and make new friends and have interesting conversations with people and i found the most annoying thing at these events is when there is one lesbian because sometimes there's always that one lesbian who decides to ruin her entire night by fixating on the 30 percent of transbians who are there who are having a good time and who she needn't engage with if she doesn't like them or doesn't want them to be there and can have a great night with the 70% of cis lesbians who are there, who she may be interested in. It's a matter, in my opinion, of picking your battles. And this mm. is an example of really not picking your battle well. There are straight dudes that come into these bars specifically because they're trying to pick up girls. So I wasn't trying to instigate anything. I was just trying to like, hey, safety check. You know? Yeah. And again, I complete. And I, I like a safety check personally. So I'm less offended by it personally understand this and i do see this it is very annoying it is annoying like you know there are guys who do that but this one guy wasn't giving any indication that he was doing that you profiled him you assumed based on how he looked and the stereotypes associated with how he looks and this is a he was also a single dude like near the bathroom right or like near a space like why is he there i don't know i don't know i'm not really that upset about her approaching him in the first place i probably would have done it nicer but often when you're dealing with men who often then get offended or violent, it's like you go up tough because you think like they're going to come off tough. So I don't know. The thing again, just because a handful of men act in a disgusting. Eh, it's more than a handful, girl. Don't play with me grading horrible entitled way doesn't mean that all men do in the same way that there's this assumption that white heteronormative men are running the world the reality is that there's a small group of men irrespective of race or ethnicity who are running the world or are running particular sectors and institutions of the world and have a grip on power and that the rest of mankind and womankind and humankind are pretty much subservient to them we have so much more in common with each other with each other's struggles with each other's qualities then we like to yes and i still want vibes to be vibes i still would love i'd love that's why i bobble hop i don't want to live there full time because i like different vibes but that's why i like vibes sometimes i want to go to a space and not see a kind of vibe i do like vibes and you can't ask for universal vibes in every space you go into that's why people live in different countries that's why people go to different cultural like bubbles because we're looking for a vibe not all gay clubs need to be the same, but they often aren't. You know what I mean? So like having a gay bar or a gay space with a certain vibe. You know what I mean? Like it's just a vibe. Kay says, I think as a man that a man standing near the bat in front of the bathroom alone in a lesbian bar seems like a fair reason to ask a question. She was lacking grace, however, but Z isn't arguing that. Yeah, like if we were arguing about her decorum, then yeah, she came in hostile. But obviously it's like she gave her reasoning, which I'm like, oh, yeah, I can get that. But also, like, you know, don't go in as hostile next time. You know, but people go hostile, guys. They just do it naturally. They, people get worried. Like, oh, my God, are you a predator? It's not great. It sucks to be the target of it. But also, like, okay, like, calm them down. Don't act like the predator they're assuming you are. You know, but you know what I mean admit because of i would say a lot of the rhetoric that comes from these people cosplaying their minority status which just makes them feel good which makes them feel like they are doing something meaningful in the world that they are battling against the evil cis heteronormative men who are taking over and destroying society and every why are you doing this starvo says that's like you always assume they would not have manners that is stereotyping why don't you assume he's going to be a gentleman because they aren't what do you mean why would i assume anything Assume a fight, it's a bar, but also, you know, go in soft so you give them a chance not to like automatically get defensive because humans are snowflakes, bro. Humans are so fucking sensitive. I would, why would I assume a man is going to be a gentleman at a bar? That's not a stereotype I know of. I've never heard of a gentleman at a bar. You know what I've heard of at a bar? Hound dogs, bro. 
non-consensual hound dogs, bro. What stereotype of a man going to a bar is a gentleman? What bubble is that? Everything good. But the more that I engage with these progressives and the more that they talk about progress, the more I realize that their notion of progress has absolutely nothing to do with the definition of progress. Wow, that was a lot of progress in one sentence. It's simply about having a different group of people on top, namely their group. And their group is engaged in the exact same type of discrimination, the exact same type of profiling. It's not the same exact type. That's why the nuance is lacking in this video. It is not the same kind. It is literally, quite literally, a completely different kind. It's really lacking the nuance for me. It literally is not the same why. This is why I love my work because figuring out that people are not doing the same thing for the same reasons is what made me pop all the bubbles in the first place. We are not doing things for the same why. And because of that, if you don't think too deeply about it, it could look the same. This is why like people don't understand why there's like black spaces because white people in America can't imagine black people gathering without them being racist against white people because white people can't seem to gather without being racist against black people. But there are ways in which you can gather without it being a racist thing. And because you can't imagine that, it's because you're only thinking about what you would do. But what about other people? They're not doing things for the same reasons. They're not, they're, sometimes it's just for the safety of the space. Like I said, parents who approach single men who hang out at parks, yes, they're stereotyping you because there's a scary consequence to if the stereotype is gonna fit that model today. You could be kidnapping a kid, bro. So again, it's not the same reason of like a man stereotyping a woman as being less than him. Like the man isn't less than, the man could be a predator. Like again, stereotyping doesn't work universally. You can stereotype in a good way. Hey, I'm assuming you're a nice person because you're gay. Well, that's probably wrong. Don't assume gay people are nice. But also, hey, I'm gonna stereotype that you'll probably understand my struggle because you're a black woman and I'm a black woman. Or hey, I'm assuming that's a stereotype, bro. And like good or bad, that is an assumption of behavior and predictability in people. And we have good relationships and bad relationships with that assumption. The exact same kind of segregationist and exclusionary thinking and rhetoric, the exact same type of stereotyping as the group who they are allegedly fighting against. So Not the same. I wasn't trying to instigate anything. I was just trying to like, hey, safety check. You know, safety check is just a euphemism for profiling. Just Not the same. Not the same thing. Safety checks are real. You should do them in your communities and you should be thoughtful about them. They are not the same thing. You should be considerate of people entering your communities and who could be coming in as a threat. Okay? Absolutely not the same. Just, just so you know. It's the exact same kind of rhetoric in cases in the UK where police have profiled young black men. They say that it's for safety, you know, this kind of safety check. Yes, but internally it's not because they haven't dismantled their issues with racism. Assuming black men are specifically worse than white men is like a stereotype that's either learned or taught, okay? In the lesbian's experience, she said it's a learned behavior because of past experience. So there's validity to her saying, I have a learned experience with male people in this particular bar causing problems for people, okay? It's like, look, there's a difference there between, uh, and like maybe the cop has a lived experience of dealing with people who are criminals who happen to be black, and therefore he's created a stereotype in his head that black men are more dangerous than whatever else. That could be valid from a learned experience. But then you realize your learned experience isn't necessarily universal, but it's still ingrained in your like fear and instinct, right? So then you have to question that, right? Again, people don't do things all for the same reason. So it's like, why are you doing that? Oh, I noticed you stabbed that person. Why did you do that? You can't just assume because like, where's the nuance, bro? Like, where's the actual, don't you want the real answer or do you just want the answer that sounds good? Because if you just want the answer that sounds good, sure, let's all stereotype each other. But like, it's not about that. And again, there's so much nuance to the word stereotype, bro. Um, yeah, I just get heated, but that's pretty much it. I'm Katie and I'm that lesbian and sorry, but actually not sorry. So she didn't even really confront him. She didn't really confront him. I heard somebody- I mean, she didn't. She literally didn't. It was just like, confronting would be like, like, in my mind, totally different. Like, oh, you're being a little confrontational. What's up with that, bro?
Mantis says, I don't see the difference other than you seeing it as a good purpose or perceived bad purpose. Well, that changes everything, though. It's not even good or bad. It's intentional. It's like to protect or to harm. It's like saying, it's like, look, everything we do has a reason. Again, someone can say, I love you and mean it to break you down and like ruin your self-esteem. Or they can say, I love you. And it's like something positive. You know what I mean? Okay. Are we all mixing up what profiling and stereotyping could mean? Like, again, assuming, okay. What do you, what do you assume of me because I'm wearing a Sailor Moon shirt? Okay, class, let's go. What do you assume of me because I'm wearing a Sailor Moon shirt? What would be a pretty reasonable assumption because I'm wearing a Sailor Moon shirt? Can anyone tell me? Discord says my partner just went to a kid's birthday without me and he said he wanted to be a participant more. B-Day kid is his goddaughter, but didn't want the parents to see a random dude with no kids playing with the kids. I get that. Okay, Natalie says that you like anime. That's a pretty good assumption. That's pretty good. Could it mean anything else? Is there something else it could mean? <laughs> Nerd. Thank you, Yaya. <laughs> Specifically Sailor Moon. Okay. SB says acoustic. Makes sense. Watch anime, weeb, gay, that you have class. Love that. Weeb, grew up in the 90s. Ooh, that's a good one. That you like anime, gay, autistic, weeb. Love that. Wanted to be a princess as a kid. Very interesting. Nerd. Okay. Discord says you own a Sailor Moon shirt. At least stole, or at least stole one. Okay. <laughs> at, uh, let's see. Bad taste in anime. <gasps> Kidding, of course. Love that. Okay, nerd, nerd, nerd. I usually assume the adults wearing anime shirts are neurodivergent. Ooh, good assumption. Stephanie says that the root of profiling and stereotyping, I would argue, is safety. Okay. Zoo says that you're a Hunter Hunter fan. First of all, fucking love Hunter Hunter. A romance made in heaven. Millennial, that I'm a millennial. Okay, it's a guess, not a stereotype. Same thing to me. A stereotype is assuming something about you based off how you look. That's what we're talking about in this conversation, right? In this conversation, we're making an assumption based off observation to associate an assumption around a type. So stereotype is a widely held but fixed and oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of person or thing. You are making a huge assumption about me based off of how I present, and you can do that off my skin color. People will often say, oh, you're white, and they'll assume because I have white skin, that means I have European descent. That's not a bad stereotype or assumption, but it's incorrect. My family's actually from Iraq and I'm Middle Eastern and I'm a Syrian, which is kind of a cool fact for a lot of people. They're like, oh, I assumed you had white skin, so you were white. Okay, you stereotyped me, which is fine. And you assume my behavior was because I was a white woman, which is also fine because like that's a pretty understandable observation of me. But there's much more to the story, okay? We make assumptions based off of a lot of information and we go on hostile or kind based off of those stereotypes and assumptions, right? Don't judge a book by its cover is really, really nice when you're talking to a whole group of well-intended people, but not so great when you're teaching your kids how to look out for predators, right? So profiling in a very literal sense, I think would be like um, negatively, negatively targeting somebody and alienating them for an assumed reason that ends up incorrect um, or more, more likely incorrect, right? So again, we have been fighting stereotypes because we've decided there's something bad, but I think a stereotype is a construct created from nature, nurture, and it's, it's a combination of survival and just like moving towards people you think will be safe. Right? Uh, Beza says profiling the actor process of extrapolating information about a person based on known traits and tendencies. I think everybody does that. Right? But if you use it for a negative, like, you know what I mean? Then that's probably, again, you want to be accurate in what you're observing. So I would ask you to do the, you know, the next part of it. You know, actually say, why do I think this about this person? You know what I mean? Mantis says, so what? So that's what she did. Is that not in a not super aggressive way? Yeah. She saw a man at a bar, thought he was alone, was concerned about the safety of the space, approached him aggressively enough that said, hey, like, what are you doing here? Then she, he said, oh, I'm here with a friend. She go, oh, OK. Then she backed off. Then he said, wait, why? Isn't that what if I was here alone? Is that a problem? She was. Yeah, I think that would be a problem. Yeah. Why wouldn't that be like I sure that's her opinion. She's allowed to think it would be a problem. You're allowed to disagree. 
I would probably agree with her more that I would be suspicious of a single man at a lesbian bar alone. Right? Cosmic says, should we keep our assumptions to ourselves? Well, if you're conflict avoidant, probably. If you're not in charge of protecting people, probably. Right? So again, um, like my dad and brothers uh, at their churches do patrol. They like patrol and like, because sometimes um, like homeless people or people will come into the church and like attack people or try to run at people. Um, there's been a lot of problems in Southern California and around. So they watch for people. And yeah, they're going to stereotype the homeless person as possibly one of those people that might attack somebody because it's happened at the church before. Not to say all homeless people, they usually give handouts, they give food to them, they help them, you know, all of those things. But they're also on edge and ready for that person to attack. Now, obviously, it's a church, so they're going to move with kindness first and thoughtfulness. But in a bar setting, you might be a little bit more hostile, okay? It's also the same, like, the same assumption of behavior. It happens that, like, if you, the reason I didn't go to straight clubs, I went once to a straight bar club. And, well, I've been to a lot of straight bars. I've been to one specific gay club. No, straight club. And... I didn't like the men touching me, right? I didn't like the men touching me. So I decided not to go back there because I didn't mind the gay guys touching me. It felt less threatening than the straight guys touching me. But the straight guys were like, well, this is a, a club. I'm here to touch you. And I said, okay, if that's the assumption of the culture, then I would rather not be there. And if I would rather not be there, that's fine. It's not made for me. I'm a queer woman. Why am I at a straight club anyways? Even though I like men, I'm not a straight woman. And straight clubs feel like straight spaces. And I don't vibe in straight spaces very well. I feel very weird there. So I left because I'm the anomaly, right? I don't feel like an, this is safe for me. And the difference would be at a lesbian bar, a single man showing up by himself, again, could have gone to another bar, could have gone to another place, could have done another thing, decided to go into a woman's focused space, even though it's inclusive, and be single there. Well, that would raise a little bit of a red flag. Just a little bit in anyone's mind, I think that would raise a red flag, right? But again, it's not proof that he's there with ill intention. So he was there with friends. That makes a lot of sense. But I think that question of would it be a red flag if I was here alone? Yeah, I think so. In the same way that I think it would be a red flag if I saw a single dude on a playground without kids there. It'd be like, hey, what are you doing here, buddy? And maybe I'd approach with some softness. Maybe I'd approach with some kindness. But again, like humans are going to human. No one's perfect. But yeah, I think that circumstance is different. And it would warrant some sort of suspicion. You use this word, Delululand, people living in Delululand. I would say that this, this applies quite perfectly to that. This is delusion. Because of this, there were a few people who called her out like, why did you assume he was a cis man? Like, how did you know he was a cis straight man in the first place? And I think that like, that's a slightly like unreasonable question to ask. That's a slightly unreasonable question to ask. I'm so sorry, but the bias in this is just so insufferable to listen to. There is no consistency in this argumentation because imagine if this white cis heteronormative guy had just had one of his identity groups changed. Imagine if he was a black guy. Oh my gosh, imagine. Like imagine if he was the most stereotypically straight looking black guy do you hannah says i wonder who kidology is trying to appeal to in this video yeah like again if one of those things were changed it would have been a different circumstance and if he was queer he would have been like hey girl what's up girl i'm safe that's the problem that's why it's an issue that's a straight guy because he took it offensively if it was another queer person they would have been like oh hey girl we're good safety check that's what i'm saying like kidology thinks she's like fucking blowing a bubble right now or popping a bubble but girl that's why that's the issue, is that it was a straight guy who took it offensively. If he wasn't straight, if he was non-binary, if he was trans, he would have literally understood why the safety check was happening. That's why it's kind of shocking when other queer people don't get the safety check. Because it's like, what's happening? Do you not know why we have the safety check? You know what I mean? That's, that's why I think the difference is there. I have a feeling that if it was not a straight guy or it was some sort of identity shift, they would have been chilling. 
Because that's how I feel when people assume bad of me and I know it's like a safety check. I just go, nah, girl, I'm one of you. We're good. <laughs> You're just, it's a signal. We're signaling, right? Um. Oh my God. Yaya says, bro, I had a man grab my hair and pull my head back and lick my face from chin to forehead. That was pretty much my straight club limit, bro. I told my sister people be touching my hair and she didn't believe me. And I said, guys, grab me and my hair. People touch my hair all the time. And she goes, there's no fucking way. We went to a club together for a friend's 80s party birthday. And a guy came up to me, grabbed me by the under part of my hair, whipped my head back and was like, I really like your hair. And I was like, okay, like go of my fucking hair. He was like six, five, fat as fuck, came charging over, shook the fucking floor. And my sister was frozen. She had no idea what to do. She was just like, <gasps> and like in front of a group of so many adults and nobody thought it was weird. And I was like, I'm used to this. This is how people treat me when I'm in public. This is how men have treated me. And I told her it would happen. I was like, 10 bucks says. She goes, there's no way this is going to happen. And it happened because that's literally my lived experience. And I just, it always fucking happens. And I'm like, I don't know what goes through their fucking heads. There's something in their stupid human brain that goes, I can do this. And I'm like, here we are. And my sister was shocked. Again, you can keep doubting me and my judgment of people, but my judgment, my prediction so on point. So fucking on point, you know? Could it be because kid is a baby queer? No, she's been queer for a long time. She's been known she's queer for a long time. What I think is the issue, um, and I find this to be my issue as well sometimes, is like, look, I, I think kids, maybe, I do this as well, where like if I'm in a group of people and someone's like, black people can't be racist, I was like, what do you mean by that? Do you mean like individual black people can't discriminate against people for having a different skin color? And like, I want to be combative. If I'm sitting in a group and they're like, um, black people are lazy, I'm like, what do you mean by lazy? Do you mean white people, the most people on welfare are like, I tend to argue with people if I think their argument is bad or like dumb, then I'm like, what do you think that? Or if they're like, all Muslims are terrorists, I was like, really? Do you want to talk about colonization? And then if they're like, oh, like, um, uh, all white people are, are this, I'm like, oh, really? What do you think? Like, my brain is so argumentative that I will like, I'm, it's not even my fight. It's not even my fight. I don't even believe it. I just know it's not true. Nothing is true universally. So when people are like, oh, do you know gay people? And I'm like, do you know this? Like, I'm just like, my brain wants to fight you. So part of me wonders if Z is seeing this pattern. So she wants to, because I've made content like this where you want to call it out. But then you realize ultimately, like everyone's living a real, true, authentic experience. Everyone's living a true, authentic, lived experience that is based off of like their understandings of the world and their education level and their knowledge of just like fact, whatever that means, right? So everything could be true for somebody. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always like, is that true? And then if you ask me, like, what do I actually believe about anything? I think humans are human and we're all the same and everybody's like too hung up on the constructs. But also like everything's fine because it's a construct, but like everything's a construct. You know, it's like, I don't know, like my personal opinion is everybody's got to chill more, bro. Like everybody stop hating each other. But like also we don't all have to get along, but also like everything's a construct. Like who cares? But that's not good. People don't like that. They want me to take a side. But I can't because I know everyone's wrong. I just know everyone's wrong and everyone's right. Everybody is wrong and everybody is right. You just can't have it two ways. You can't say this guy deserves to be, feel safe in this space, but this girl doesn't. Because that's what you're saying. If you think this man should be able to feel safe at a lesbian bar, then why can't the lesbian also want to feel safe at the lesbian bar? Why does he get to feel safe at a lesbian bar, but she can't want to feel safe at the lesbian bar? everyone's right and everyone's wrong. Again, I don't know if people know that's what they're saying, but that's what you're saying. Like everyone just wants to feel safe. And also everyone just wants to hate who they hate, you know? Honestly think that Katie would have approached him. Now, unlike the queer Kiwi here, I'm not going to engage in this bad faith argument, but I would bet quite a bit of money that this would have been a very different conversation that Katie had with the man if he had been black. Very different. You don't have to move, King. Wakanda forever. I'll just pee. <laughs> this is a sickness. <laughs> on the ground like your ancestors had to i understand that trans men are allowed in like now at the rate that black men in america are homophobic now nah, he would have been a bigger threat than the white guy the white guy is less likely to be homophobic than the black guy at the lesbian bar but also black guys wouldn't be at a lesbian bar because they're more homophobic than white guys stereotypically so actually the black guy being at the queer bar he is more likely to be queer ah fuck yeah I, that's so true though i just fucking that's so true though i'm so smart lesbian spaces and like 
queer women spaces because, you know, they also suffer from a lot of gender discrimination and might not feel safe in other spaces. That's interesting as well. That is so interesting. How would you know that this man wasn't a trans man, a trans being? She didn't know, but he would have corrected her and then they would have been besties who just hadn't transitioned yet. How do you know this? And this is one of the issues with making places inclusive, I think, because inclusivity without any boundaries, without any repercussions, without any consensual conversation with the patronage of a place, with the community, creates issues like this. It creates issues like this where it just becomes very clear that human beings are not as inclusive as we like to be. No, we're not inclusive. And I don't think we should be. I think we should stop killing each other and stop creating rumors about each other and stop putting each other in prison. But I don't think we need to be inclusive. I think we need to stop pretending that we're all going to get along. We're not all going to get along. Okay? But like we need to stop killing each other and stop doing all the bad stuff tend to be. And cosplaying minorities are the demographic of people who like to pretend that they are 100% inclusive, but then they're not. And but they're not. They're like, okay, everybody does that though. I, okay, have you never heard the religious? Religious people literally go, go, God loves everybody. God welcomes everybody. God wants everybody. He doesn't want you. He only wants you if you wear the uniform and you speak correctly. Everybody thinks they're inclusive. Everybody thinks they're inclusive. They can't possibly be because that's just impossible for human beings. But at the same time- But I understand. I've also, I'm just arguing with Z because I argue with everybody. But like, ultimately I've made this conversation, I've made this argument too. Because yeah, progressives, super not inclusive. But also I get it. Like, I get why you're not. I don't think you should be. I think you should stop pretending you are. But also that's still the right language to say I'm inclusive. I say I'm inclusive in this space all the time, but that's not true. I'm LGBT inclusive. Um, you can't have a conversation with them about it because they don't want to engage with it and they don't need to engage with it. They don't need to engage with the realities of the consequences of being fully inclusive because, well, conveniently, you can just blame everything on white men and end of. As you should. Down with the white man. <laughs> but I still think that asking a man that you see in that space, like, why are you here? is completely valid. And I think that trans men who understand why women may hmm. feel afraid and uncomfortable with a man there would understand that. I agree with her. That is my lived experience. That is true. That I feel like that is definitely my lived experience. And be sympathetic to that and not respond with aggression. I agree. So I feel like just responding with aggression kind of solidifies the fact that this is a cis hat man. So I... Yeah, I agree with that, though that still could be wrong. I do agree with that, but I do think the anomaly could happen. I do think queer people, he could still be queer, but I, I do think that, that that is probably, yeah. I feel like just responding... Responding with aggression kind of solidifies the fact that this is a cis hat man. Like the entitlement, the arrogance, and the aggression in that response really solidifies that this is not his space, but he feels like he deserves to be in it. I love how a man asking a question about why he was questioned for being somewhere is instantly deemed aggressive by virtue of him being a man. Isn't that interesting? But that's not what happened. Okay, either they were both aggressive or neither of them were aggressive. You can't say she was aggressive and then his retort to her isn't regressive, aggressive. She started off aggressive, which I agree, but then he literally said, why, would that be a problem? And then she said, yeah, actually it would. Like, that is an aggressive, they had an aggressive confrontation at a bar. Isn't that so stereotypical? How is he entitled, arrogant, and aggressive for asking a question? Asking a question when he was approached by somebody and questioned about why he was there. He has every right to ask a question. Why can't people ask questions? This is how we find out things. This is how we find out information about things and situations. Just like the straight woman who made her TikTok was asking a genuine question whether this was a problem, because apparently, according to Katie, this was a problem. Are males, are straight males not allowed to go to a lesbian bar? I am genuinely curious, like I They can go if they want, but why are you there, bro? Why are you there? 
said this was my first time going to a legit lesbian bar. She's asking a question. Like, of course she's looking for validation. Of course she's not just asking a question, but she is trying to find out. Maybe things have changed. Maybe the rules of the game have changed. But I think that we are demonizing people for asking questions, which is why people don't ask questions anymore, which is why people just assume things or just answer questions for themselves, which leads to everybody having a completely different narrative and understanding of the world. Like, we're not communicating or engaging with each other. Meaning yeah, but like, I don't know if Z's displaying much engagement with it either right here right like I understand what she's saying but I feel like she's using this as an example to make a bigger point but the two points aren't connected you know what I mean like like people are allowed to have confrontations and in, in, like, at the bars like it happens sometimes it's not a big deal you don't got to read into it too much but like also the straight person went on the internet to complain about it so just like heads up the gay person didn't even make a video complaining that a gay man or a straight man was at her bar, but the straight people went on the internet to complain that they had this confrontation. So the gay person felt a need to reply to it and say why I did it, which is really within reason. And maybe you didn't like the way she approached him, but like they were both aggressive and they both just had a, it's just called a confrontation. Oh my God, guys, be adults. It's just sometimes you're going to have a confrontation. Okay, cool. We think differently. Cool. Who has more right to a lesbian bar? A straight guy or a lesbian? I'd say probably the lesbian. It's in the title. But also, okay, like if lesbian bars, the stereotype for a lesbian bar is that it's full of straight men, cool. One le less thing for the lesbians, I guess. Like what? And when people ask questions and you treat them like this, this is why people don't ask questions. And this is why- But he didn't just ask a question, bro. And also, she just asked a question. Why can't she just ask a question, Z? Why can't this lesbian just ask a question? What, what's wrong with her? Just, she just asked a question. What was wrong with it? I, again, Z's making the same argument she's making against the people in the video, which I feel is just very human of us. You want him to be able to ask a question? Well, the lesbian wanted to ask a question. So who was allowed to ask the question? And was anyone allowed to ask the question? So much support is being lost for the basic tenets of LGBTQ plus rights and people. I'm also maybe a little stressed over the video that's been viral on my page right now because I didn't mean any ill will by it and the lesbians of TikTok are coming for me and I'm sorry for that. I really just had a genuine question. I didn't know I was going to get yelled at. You did not have a genuine question because you literally came in... <sighs> that's not a genuine question. A genuine question is like, hey guys, I feel really fucking fucked up. I went to this bar and now I can't decide. It was like, was I out of line? Because now I feel kind of like awful about it. I didn't mean to offend anybody. It wasn't that. It was like, <sighs> I went to a bar with my friend and like what? Can like, can straight people not go to bars anymore? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like she went for validation and I feel like C's giving her that validation, but like nobody really cares about the lesbian's perspective because you're just whittling her down to like, oh, she's like a racist cop who hates black people. What? This is not even remotely the same thing. This is not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Bombarded, screamed at. There's lots of mean things going on in those comments. So I have learned my lesson and I will never be returning to a lesbian bar ever again. Great, love that. For good reason. I am sure that if you approached a trans man and asked that, they would respond in a much gentler way. Either, you know, saying that they are trans because they are in a space where it is like safe to say that. Or they could be in their trauma and feeling really alienated because they don't fit into the queer community and they could end up responding with the defensiveness too. Anything could happen. Or by just being like, hey, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm with those people over there. Please don't mind me. It's not going to be an aggressive response. I'm it sure. It could be a, an aggressive response. There is a probability of that happening. And I think it would still come from insecurity, defensiveness. Is the defensiveness the problem? Ultimately, yes. Okay. But everything, like, okay, you know what I mean? Or that if you asked a trans man that he would respond in a more gentler way. Have you seen the battles online and in the real world? See, my lived experience is that they would answer in a nicer way because I know I've been that queer person who's been questioned or that like white passing woman who's been questioned and people are like, why are you here? And I'm like, that's a great question. I get that on the internet all the time. And sometimes I like to fuck with people and be like, meh, 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 meh. But most of the time people are just trying to say, hey, are you safe? They're just asking, are you safe? I get it though. It's easy to get defensive.
world between trans people and gender critical feminists have you seen how vitriolic and horrible different bubbles different people people are in a monolith all they are to each other like <laughs> can you imagine one of the trans activists being asked at a lesbian only bar lesbian only bar that is fully inclusive of people so who knows can you imagine them being asked by katie why they are there and responding in a non-aggressive way yeah that's my lived experience that's my personal lived experience but again it's not a monolith so someone could react differently and hostile yes it's different everywhere Everyone's this different. is what you call essentialist argumentation. This idea that particular people have essential characteristics. They do based off of culture and expectation. But it's not always. It could be. It probably is going to be just like probability wise. Because according to the queer Kiwi, cis heteronormative white men are essentially aggressive when they ask a question. They often are, and they often are literally like the key components in violence or straight men in general. So I don't know why we're pretending otherwise. And my lived experience actually supports that. So again, I try not to stereotype. You know, I'm a little misandrous sometimes. I have a really bad, I just have bad interactions with lots of men. Not all men. Lots of men are great. But men are incredibly defensive people. I mean, humans are defensive in general, but like, yeah, the idea that men aren't like very stereotypically defensive, I don't even know what we're talking about, especially at a bar with alcohol involved. Like, what are we talking about? So they are essentially bad just for asking a question. Whereas a trans person who gets asked a question is essentially a good person. So they will essentially answer without aggression and in a far more civil and kindly way. There is no evidence for this whatsoever. And that's the basis of essentialism. There's no reasonable basis for anything. It's like people who essentially think that black people are either criminals or black people are essentially good and saintly, depending on what side of the political spectrum on the extreme political spectrum you are essentialism is okay starvo says men are people aren't a monolith but men are a monolith to you at least to the specific lesbian no men aren't a monolith that's why she asked she literally asked what are you doing here so she didn't treat him if she if she really didn't want to ask him first she just would have been like you need to get out of this bar then he would have been like what if she treated him the way other people are treated when they're in, when they're negatively look how she didn't even do the thing guys in truly like racist or truly like sexist spaces she wouldn't have even asked him what he was doing here she would have gone up to him and said you need to leave but she didn't do that she said hey what are you doing here she checked because she was trying to check herself because she isn't just going to assume he's a bad person that's why she asked and then when he corrected her, she backed off. Then a moment later, he decided he was going to get defensive about it. So obviously she wasn't treating him. She was checking. She was doing a safety check. That's great. That's what you should do. Maybe she could have been nicer about it. But like she, she, uh, she literally backed off once he explained what he was doing there. So she's like, okay, my bad. Like she got it wrong. Maybe she wasn't as nice. But like then he moved the aggression level more and then his friends joined him. And now she is being dogpiled by multiple people getting defensive over a safety question. Is terrible. It's awful. It is the absolute base level of any kind of argumentation or notion of how the world works and how people are. Essentialism is laziness at its finest. And that's why, as I said, this is a perfect example of cosplaying minority status because you don't need to engage with reality and you don't face the consequences of the reality which you are fabricating in your mind. And I also imagine that a lot of trans men would feel like quite, you know, elated almost that they pass well enough to be mistaken for a cis man in a lesbian bar. You know what I mean? Like they're not gonna respond with aggression. And I think that really answers the question and think that that makes it unfair that people are being like, well, how did you know? Why did you assume? Like she didn't, she just asked a man why he was there and he responded aggressively. 
so and that's the thing she didn't just ask why he was there she was purposefully and pointedly asking him because she was annoyed with him and had profiled him this is why we need to talk to each other because you can't just lump together groups of people and make essentialist claims about them their behavior and their characteristics because then when you actually go into reality and a cis white man is actually a decent fellow and is nice and friendly what are you going to do your entire worldview is just this is why you need to treat people like individuals. This is why you need to treat every individual that you encounter in the world like an individual. Because if you don't, you assume things about whole groups of people that are just not true. And this is why we don't get anywhere. This is sort of a privileged take, right? <laughs> she doesn't mean it though. I know Z's smart enough. She doesn't mean this. Obviously, we stereotype if we notice like gang tattoos on people. I'm not just going to act stupid. You know, when I was in Miami, ABBA warned me. I was in Miami doing a very neuro neurodivergent thing that I always do. I make very strong direct eye contact with people, especially men, because I was told that um, women don't make enough direct eye contact with men. So I was like, and ABBA was like, Brittany, stop trying to fight all these men. And I was like, I'm not trying to fight these men, bro. I'm trying to stand my dominance. He goes, I know you're going to make me try to fight these men. I don't want to fight these men for you. And I was like, what? And he said, when you're in Miami, you're making direct eye contact with all these men. You're going to put them on edge. You're, they're going to think you're like inviting them over. And I was like, oh shit, my bad, my bad. Because I was treating them as individuals instead of as a collective cultural group that was in Miami my bad and a lot of them were brown men and i was like my bad i don't know the rules in miami okay tom fuller in the chat let's go so my friend abba had my back and told me hey stop making direct eye contact with all these bros dude and i was like my bad bro so again yes in an ideal world we treat everybody as an individual and i agree with that when you're one-to-one -one. but when you're interacting with strangers you might be a little on edge or if you're interacting with people, you might be a little hesitant. Look, all people have valid perspectives for every, like everyone's going to have, like every man I know has a story of like, man, I really felt like I couldn't even be myself in this space because I'm a man and I feel like people thought bad of me automatically. And for every guy I know who's like that, that same guy will talk about how gross men are, how perverted men are, how awful men are. Don't let men around your kids. Don't leave like, why are you a man alone? Like everyone knows that as individuals, we get our feelings hurt, but then all of us are about to stereotype if it comes to protecting kids. All you all are happy to discriminate against men the moment it comes to protecting kids. So I don't know what we're playing at. In our current cultural arguments and our current cultural wars, because everybody is in these identitarian groups that make assumptions about everybody else that have essentialist claims and characteristics attributed to particular groups. And we don't get anywhere. We really don't, because that is not how people actually are. Everybody's different. And the sooner we realize that, the closer we get to realizing the alleged progressive, good, all inclusive. Yes, but kid, okay, so kids argument, we're not all the same. Yes. So they're not all the same. That's what I mean. We all want everyone to change for us so badly. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like the way you are. Hey, I'm not like you. Okay, so get the fuck out. Why are we socializing together, bro? Like, oh, I don't like the way you talk. I don't like the way you say that. I don't like, yes, yes, yes. We all, we... okay, I get it. Jesus, I understand. But every time you ask someone to change for you, you're doing the same fucking thing. You don't want them to change for you. If you don't want the lesbian going up to the man at the bar and the lesbian doesn't want the man at the bar, it's the same fucking thing at the end of the day, okay? We're asking who gets to be in this space. Well, okay, now we have to ask how to create a space where we don't get into these arguments. Well, then we have to ask, do we create an echo chamber of people that are the same? Yeah, sometimes. That's all of how the world works. Diversity is so unique. Diversity is chaos. Diversity is literally like everyone just crashing up against each other because the moment you deviate from the thought, it's like, well, that's why I don't hang out in the bubbles full time. That's why I don't want to be a part of your cliques. Because if you're part of a clique, you have to look, dress, act the same, or you're signaling some sort of threat to the group. It's why it's so fucking annoying. And again, if you're going to visit the group, you have to signal that you're not a threat to the group. That's all the lesbian was asking. Can you signal you're not a threat to the group? And Kid is like, why are you assuming you're a threat to the group? Because you're going to assume these like trans people on the internet are also a threat to the group because they're hostile because that's the stereotype, right? You are stereotyping angry trans people on the internet as hostile because the stereotype is correct. 
there are some blue haired fat lesbians with nose rings who happen to be trans who are absolutely going to be hostile because that's the category they belong into. But not all fat lesbians who are non-binary or trans who have nose rings are hostile trans people. Some of them are just people. They're hip, they're hippies. They're actually med- they meditate. They believe in the Tao. Like they don't even fucking speak, you know. And that's what my work does. My work says everyone is category like in a category. And the question is, are you the kind of black straight guy that actually hates LGBT people? Okay, you go here, okay, with Jesse Peterson, Jesse Lee Peterson, okay. Are you the kind of black guy that's kind of actually okay with LGBT people, but you probably wouldn't be like getting a lap dance from a guy anytime soon? Okay, you're like in the ABBA group. You're like cool, okay? You're cool. You're safe. But like you're not going to like let a guy sit on your lap, okay? Got it. That's cool. Then, oh, are you the guy who's like so comfortable with LGBT people that you're like, yeah, give me a lap dance. That's cool. Okay, then you're in this group. And all of them are the same. They're all black men. But see how they're different categories? Okay, cool. Same thing. Oh, you're a lesbian? What kind of lesbian are you? Are you a trans lesbian? Oop, that's its own category. Are you a white lesbian? Totally different category. Are you a black lesbian? Love that. Oh, but the white and the black lesbians actually both agree veganism is the way to go. Okay, so you guys are actually more together because now you're not deviating on skin color, but instead joining on ideology. Got it. Okay, you guys go together. Then it's like, okay, oh, I love anime. What kind of anime? What kind of anime? Like, what kind of anime are you into? I don't love isekai. Some people fucking love isekai. I just, I'm not vibing, okay? I don't really watch it. I'm gonna be real with you. I like shonen. I like reverse harem. I like a lot, but I don't really love shonen. I mean, sorry, isekai. So, okay, I'm probably not gonna join an isekai club for anime viewers. That probably isn't gonna, what if I joined and I was like, can you guys change and can we watch some more shonen? Because like, I'm not really into this isekai. Why the fuck are you showing up to an isekai like anime club and being like, can we show more shonen? Or reverse harem. Like, what are we doing? What are you doing? Okay. What are you doing? It's a homogenous world that allegedly we all want. Like, surely the fact that straight people feel welcome in queer spaces and queer people increasingly feel welcome in straight spaces is a good thing. But according to the logic of the queer Kiwi, this is not a good thing. Queer people can go into lots of straight bars without acting overly, like, gay culturally. Like, loud and rainbows and glitter because it's not the vibe. In the same way, religious people could go into club. Oh, never mind. I'm so tired. Fuck it. You guys get it. We should not be celebrating this. We should not be happy that a straight man feels that he's able to be friends with a lesbian and a straight woman. Because God forbid in this world, apparently men and women can't actually be friends. I mean, I mean some bubbles they aren't. In some bubbles, you, men and women can't be friends. Yes, in some bubbles, men and women can't be friends. In other bubbles, they can be. It's not a universal experience. Like, in some bubbles, men and women should not be friends. It's not a vibe. Okay? Yeah, says Abba and his feet thing. Don't look at his feet. That's gay. Honestly, though, Abba been a little sussy lately. I'm going to tease him about it when we talk. <laughs> I want to tease him about it when we talk. He's been so funny. Oh, my God. I've been, like, cry laughing to Abba lately where he's, like, he's just saying the gayest shit, bro, and it's so funny. He's very comfortable, Abba. I see him getting more and more... Like, I like it. I love the, uh, their content's been, been good. Wouldn't we be celebrating this? That there are queer women who like a straight man and have invited them into their space, into their group, and that they're having a good time together. Yes, that's beautiful, bro. But what about the other people? Do they get a space too? That's beautiful. I love that, bro. I agree with Z. This is beautiful. Now, is it also okay that gay women want to go to gay clubs and not see men there? who are straight. Is that also okay? I think it's okay. Have Isn't both. this a point for celebration? Isn't this what- Both it, are a point of celebration. Inclusivity and acceptance is about, but no, apparently this is a terrible thing. Regardless of whether a cis-hit man- It can be a terrible thing. Is invited in by a queer friend or not, doesn't really matter. I don't think he should be there. And I- That's an okay opinion to have. I think it's different and subjective to the bar into the atmosphere, especially if there are no people in the bar. Sure, why not? think that queer women shouldn't be inviting their cis-het male friends into these spaces. This I think that's fair. I kind of, I agree that that could be the case where it makes sense. I also agree there could be a space where you could invite your friends. This is you disrupting your peace for no reason, except because there's just always something to complain about. It's not though. Creating a safe space 
is so specific. Women only spaces is a real thing. Men only spaces is a real thing. I think they deserve to have those spaces. I do. Something that actual minorities who actually experience the realities of being minorities don't complain about because they live in reality. As a straight person, you can go. See, that's the only problem with Z's thing. Real minorities, what'd she say? Real minorities? Oh. Minorities. Then, except because there's just always something to complain about. Something that actual minorities who actually experience the realities of being minorities don't complain about. Because You're doing it right now. You're stereotyping minorities for what you think a real minority is. Why would you do that? Why did you just create a subcategory of what you call real minorities? Who the fuck are you? I love Z so much, by the way. I'm not, I'm just using her. Oh my God, peace and love. I'm just using her to like jump off an idea. But like she just did it. What is this? Real minorities. What does that even mean? You're not a real minority. What does that mean? That's the same bullshit black communities tell Z all the time. See, this is why I think Z is just like talking about a specific thing. Because like she literally said on my video with her, she like doesn't like being stereotyped or ignored by black communities because they stereotype her as like a Oreo or a C word. Yeah, because they think you're not a real black woman. You just did that to other minorities. You just said they're not a real minority. Humans are all the same everywhere, bro. Me, you, and the like. We're all the fucking same. Because they live in reality. As a straight... Yeah, well... Okay. Each person. You can go literally anywhere. You can go anywhere. Beza says, I don't think you're understanding her concept of cosplaying minorities. No, I think I do understand it. I understand it because I used to make these same arguments. I used to watch podcast number one on the Britney Simon podcast. I literally made these same arguments. And like it's saying like she's not, then she's not bringing home the point. If that's what she's not, you're saying that's not what she means though, then what does she mean? What does she mean? Go anywhere. You can go to any bar, especially as a cishet man. You can go to any bar and feel safe. And yet, <laughs> and yet you stood in that line surrounded by queer non-cis men, right? You stood in that line around all those people and waited to get in and you never once this is like a weird assumption we don't know if there was a line thought like maybe this is a bad idea maybe i shouldn't be here maybe these people behind me deserve to go into this bar more than i do the assumptions anyway i'd love to hear your thoughts on this especially this idea of people cosplaying their minority status because this is something that i see everywhere i mean a lesbian is a minority status she can't cosplay it she is a lesbian or this like girl at the bar is a lesbian. And this girl on this YouTube video, I don't know, she's queer, but like, I don't know. And it is just such a prevalent thing at the moment. It's sort of this almost glamorization of being a minority and complaining about every little. Beza says, no, she's saying in a minority majority space, you're not a minority anymore. So you're cosplaying a minority. I could be misunderstanding, but that's what she meant. But that's not true. She is a minority. What do you mean? A minority majority because she's a white lesbian she's not a minority anymore she's saying in a minority majority space kidology girl you better explain because i'm fucking confused love you too Brittany. i do clarify my meaning of cosplaying in my video disclaimer in your video disclaimer is that in the chat okay video disclaimer thank you z Recently, there's been a lot of conversation debate around safe spaces and who's allowed to in them on the basis of profiling people. I don't, I do want to emphasize, nope, oh, here we go. Get ready for Britney's like uh, dyslexia here. I do want to emphasize, as I say in the video, that I am not saying that people who cosplay their minority status aren't minorities. Okay, good. I think there is a, there is a recent glamorization of being part of a particular minority identities and demographics that really isn't true to the lived experience of most minorities enabling, inhabiting, sorry, those identities and demographics. Isn't that a bubble? Like, it depends on the culture. It's trendy to be oppressed for some of these minorities, but for most, it either isn't trendy or is something they are indifferent to in their day-to-day -day lives. That is, could be true, but in this example, she is a lesbian at a lesbian bar and there is a man there. So I feel like that's exactly one of the frustrations of being a lesbian. Right? That's like literally the minority problem. But okay. I agree that that can be the case. I just don't know if this was a good example of it. This has a bizarre, this has bizarre ramifications when it comes to how minorities are perceived by the bubbles, which we shouldn't care about unless we're doing politics. 
the only reason you should care how people perceive you is if they're a threat to you. And if they're a threat to you, they're probably a majority, right? And then you're trying to win their favor so you can get rights because they've taken them away from you. So just keep that in mind, right? Minorities are perceived and treated, lumped together, and tokenized, not just by everyone else, but especially by cosplaying minorities who increasingly prove themselves incapable of appreciating the very things that are allegedly fighting for. We're assuming they're all fighting for the same thing in the same way. An appreciation and respect for diversity, difference, and tolerance, and the humanization of individuals. It's disappointing that we're all going down this path. Who's all? So, right? Like, we're or not. Sorry, I read all. I put in all. She didn't say all. Z didn't say all. It's disappointing that we're going down this path. Mm, I don't know if I agree with that. And hope that sooner rather than later we change course. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, that makes sense to me. And we're almost done with the video. But I think, like, again, everyone, if everyone is uniquely diverse and I think like people get to exist in both places. You know what I mean? And I think, look, as I'm looking for a diagnosis of, uh, of possible autism or ADHD, I guarantee you already that people are not going to believe me because I'm quote high functioning if I end up getting diagnosed because like, that's just how it works. Or my fibro people are like, there's no way you have fibro dude. You're so functional. Like people all the time doubt statuses, but it's not up to us as individuals, at least through my content to care about what people think about us. It's how you operate in the bubbles. The bubbles are a social construct created by a group of people, whoever the group of people you're interacting with is, and we have to act accordingly. So it's not about us caring what other people think about us. We shouldn't think about that. We should think, how do I properly interact, socialize, and understand the expectation of behavior in the group that I'm in? And if you would like to change that behavior, then you are now the disruptor. If you are asking people to change, you are now the disruptor right? Whether you're my Catholic mother going to Seattle and asking people to change the way their decorations are because she's uncomfortable, or whether you're a gay person asking a Catholic person to marry you when that doesn't make any sense, like you are the disruptor. And sometimes disruption brings on progress, oftentimes, most times, right? So that's also good. But also when we get down to just like this little example, I absolutely also agree that like straight men, generally speaking, shouldn't be in gay spaces. But also there is a possibility that you might want to do that as well. I just personally, as a queer person, don't often appreciate it, but could also appreciate it if the space calls for it. I've clubbed a lot with my straight guy friends, and sometimes it's a vibe, and sometimes it's not. In lesbian-only spaces, I find it to be less of a vibe. You know what I mean? But that's my personal lived experience myself. Just myself, you know? But I also think it's cool that there are lesbian spaces in which men can hang out in too. Like, I don't care. But, per you know thing and making it everybody's issue and acting incredibly entitled to things that most minorities just accept that reality just is not a reality of our making we're all essentially playing a game most minorities accept that they're playing i think everyone is even majorities i think even privileged people everyone rich people everyone's playing a game game that they're not in control of but they can make the best out of that game and they can still enjoy playing the game whereas these cosplayers tend to believe that they are in charge of the game and if they're not in charge of the game that they should be in charge of the game and they make it everybody else's business that i feel like everybody thinks that you know that they should be in charge of the game if that metaphor makes any sense but anyway let me know what you think i would be fascinated to hear your opinion on this situation maybe i'm misunderstanding something i probably am z i'm probably misunderstanding you I just feel like the moment you make a request of someone, now you are the requester. So like by making this video, that's why I try not to make prescriptions and tell people to do things. Because once you make the decision to tell people to change, you are now the disruptor. And so now you're like coming at people for living their life. But it's like, if you say, I would like to live in a world like this versus like, this is like what I think is happening. Yeah, because like, yeah, because if I... Yeah, because I think if I had an ideal lesbian bar, straight men wouldn't be there. But why does Britney's ideal lesbian bar get to be everyone else's? Why wouldn't we just make lesbian bars with all the options? But in my ideal lesbian bar, yeah, why would men be there? But also, like, I understand why men would be there for some people. Mantis says, is the issue whether men should be in that space or is the issue how he was profiled and approached? Yeah, but like, again, a, a single guy at a park in a playground with kids it makes sense to profile him and to ask, hey, do you have any kids here? What are you doing here? In the same way that I think if I was at a lesbian bar and there was a single dude there, I'd be like, why are you there? I just like, why? So why would he be there? Can we name some reasons? Why would a single dude be at a lesbian bar? 
Why would you go to a lesbian bar? First and foremost, why do you think people go to lesbian bars? Do you think they treat lesbian bars just like any old bar? Or is there a specific energy to lesbian bars? Are we at the state? Are we at the part? Are we in the part of like um, cultural um, progression in which lesbian bars are just like straight bars? Do you think a, a homophobe would feel comfortable more in a lesbian bar or a straight bar? Probably a straight bar, meaning a basic bar, a bar that isn't focused on being gay. So I feel like if there's a difference, there'd be a reason why he might be there because his friends wanted to go. Well, then he's not alone. I said, why would a single straight guy be at a bar? Why would a single guy, no friends, he doesn't have friends there. It's just one guy, he's at the bar. Why would he be at a lesbian bar? You know? Yeah, you said it's kind of like a stand-up comedian going up in a straight in a in, on stage at a spoken word night a little bit. Yeah. Maybe he likes to eat out to see what it's like. Okay, so he's like going into a bubble that's not his to observe the people there and to not be a part of it, but to observe it. Okay, that could be a reason. What's another reason like a single dude could be at a lesbian bar? Natalie says trying to pick up by girls. I've seen that happen. Inappropriate. I don't like that, but okay. Like I've seen that happen. Mario says gay bars have the best music. Lesbians are different. To bother women, Monet. <laughs> to make friends. Interesting. Why would a man go to a lesbian bar to make friends? What kind of friends is he trying to make? You know, what would be some of the good reasons he would go to a lesbian specific bar? You know, he may be considering a sex change. Okay, maybe, maybe. That could be one for sure. So like research. Okay. Okay. To see girls make out. I'm afraid so. Which, by the way, super gross. Right? Yippie said if bi girls wanted to get picked up by a man, they should go to a standard bar. I agree with that. Colleen says a single straight man in a lesbian bar is crazy. Well, is it? Maybe we're wrong. Maybe, maybe there's a good reason he's there. You know? Aurora says, I know some guys who don't like to go to man places. They don't like the energy. Okay, wouldn't a standard bar be a non-man place? A sports bar would be more of a man place, maybe. But like a standard bar would be a mixture of men and women. A dive bar for like bikers would maybe be more, more men with some girlfriends or wives, you know. Dad says, but even if the bar is straight, is it a conservative bar, a liberal bar? These things must take, be taken into account. True. Is a Midwest bar? Or is it like a high luxury bar? Again, in Croatia, the party bars are different. They usually have young people than the like regular bars. Like again, I keep going to bars here and they feel like coffee shops that sell alcohol also has a, a, a an, an older demographic who goes. And so that's kind of, in, I like those vibes, but they're very standoffish and they're like, we're not meant to socialize there. It's like, mind your business. And then there's like the party bars, which I haven't gone to, obviously. So again, I think like there's plenty of reasons why a single man might be at a lesbian bar, but I'm not hearing any good ones yet. Colleen says, but do any of these reasons really override the comfort and safety of the women? So as a good community member, I would say no. And that's what I'm looking at. I don't want to be a part of a community where a straight guy feels entitled to be at a lesbian bar. I don't think that's a good community member personally, in my opinion. But it's okay if you want to live in a bubble where in your community, straight men are entitled to gay bars, specifically lesbian bars. Sorry, not gay, lesbian bars. I don't want to live in that community. I think that's a bad community member action, but that's a bubble and that's a preference. In my opinion, I would think that's like off-putting. If my boyfriend did that, I would find that so gross. Like if my husband was like, oh yeah, I just like love being at lesbian bars. I feel like that's a space for me. I'd be like, you're being weird. Why are you doing that? But same with like women who feel entitled to gay bars, gay club spaces. Um, A bunch of men have complained and said, hey, straight women, you need to stop coming to our bars. We'd like a space for men to meet and date. And I think that's valid. I think it's also valid for gay guys to invite women in and to have a good time. I think both are valid. Natalie says, back when I thought I was straight, a uh, straight guy, I once went into a gay bar for just the free pool table. Hey, that could be a good reason to go into a gay bar or whatever. Free pool table. That's cool. Robin says in Stockholm, a lot of the bars are just a mix of everything. Depends on the night or the day of the week. That's cool. That's a vibe. Mario says, is it a public place or is it a private members only? It's a private. It's a public place. So it's a public lesbian bar. All genders are welcome. 
Um, again, if you've never been to a lesbian bar, this might sound weird. It's like going into a sports bar with like high glitter heels and like a tiara and like walking in and being like a disruptor. So again, if you're a disruptor to the vibe, that's what I'm looking at. I would think it was would be wrong for like a gay, hyper gay, like full on party gear to walk into a sports bar and ruin the vibe there. I think that I'm not into it. I, I'm not personally into it. It gives me like rude feelings where I'm like, why are you ruining the vibe? If you go to a high tea place and somebody shows up and they're not like, like guys, the opportunity to pop into bubbles is the opportunity to be like them. Do as the Romans do. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's like, that's how I think you should do things personally. If you want to change culture, you're the disruptor. You can do that but you are the disruptor. Maddox says, which is why I think many gay guys are annoyed with a lot of women because they usually tend to be disruptors. I agree. I just feel like it's weird. Like, why are you ruining the vibe? It's like going to a library and somebody comes in blasting music. It's like, what are you doing? Like, why are you being that guy? You know, but also like, you know, if you want to be that kind of community member, fine. There is communities where maybe you listen to music in the library. I don't want to be a part of it, but you know, because I love a library. It's so quiet. But maybe you want to start a rule where libraries actually play music now. Cool. Go do that. You have one life. Go make a library with loud music. Anyways. Okay. That's where we're at. That's, that's, that's my contribution to the conversation. I love Z. I love Kidology. I love all of this. I think all her opinions are really, really valid. But I don't think they're universal. And I think arguing that they could be is like not my favorite thing. But she's obviously just advocating for her perspective, which I think is really, really valid. So valid. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. I just want to live in a world where we can, to the best of our ability, with no ill intent or malice towards anyone, are able to create spaces where we could all feel safe and vibe. Sense. I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.